Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. I wholeheartedly offer whatever switch your time zone. Please uh, do accept. I hope everyone is doing well. I really do mean that. And today we're going to talk about uh, the rumors that Stephen Paglico has been uh, ejected from the process, so Chelsea so process. And also uh, the rumors that Cesar Aspliqueta and the fact that Cesar Aspliqueta has extended his Chelsea stay in Barcelona are still coming after him. Also that the Rudiger's agents uh, were secretly have secretly started negotiating with Barcelona. So sit tight and let's get into it. Yes, uh, Fahima, welcome back to Chelsea Perspective. How are you doing, brother? Yes, I'm doing well, Coach. How are you? I can't complain. Uh, I mean, it's it's been crazy for all of us, given the situations our uh, beloved club uh, are in. But uh, we'll get through it. And like we've uh, mentioned here on the show time and time again, we will uh, emerge stronger. So, Fahim, do you have any updates for us? Or do you want me to go ahead with the updates? Yeah, go ahead with updates. I'm I'm a bit behind uh, with all these uh, new bidder updates, so do tell me. Mm. Okay, I'm I'm learning uh, uh, that Sazas with Creators uh, contract has extended uh, automatically extended because it was designed to be that way. So that's why uh, that is it's been structured already to extend if he played a certain amount of game. So that was why uh, uh, the restrictions in place wasn't an issue. He uh, the contract extended, and at, the surprising thing is that even after that, Barcelona are still looking at to sign him. Your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, uh, to be honest, like his his contract extended, but it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that um, he'll stay for another season. But one thing it will guarantee is that he won't leave on a free agent um, end of the season. Um, mm. But but the club can still sell him, but I I'm sure um, that uh, that they don't want to sell him just yet because we do need a replacement for Aspilicueta. If he was to mm. leave, we we would need at least two more players because he covers the right wing back role here. He covers the right centre back role, and to lose someone versatile like Aspilicueta, you need to find a like to like sort of replacement and. It's very hard to find someone like Aspi nowadays that can play mm-hmm. many, many roles. And one thing I hope that Chelsea will do is that if we do keep him, um, we try and transition to another another sort of centre-back or right wing-back so that it helps us and transition whenever he does leave. So um, I'm happy that it's been extended, but um, we'll see what happens next season because... Yeah, um, because we could still sell him. That this happened with Giroud. Um, we extended his his contract by another year to just gain to just make a profit from him. So yeah, I think oh. uh, even at that, I think one one of the things I like the most about him is that he's such a good professional. Never, never, never uh, complains and never you know causes problems in his uh, cause any sort of problems in the dressing room. I mean, he's uh, even when he doesn't get to play that much, uh, you know, he, you see him, you know, you know, you see him, you know, smiling all the time, and also, you know, being a professional that he is. And uh, even you know, under Frank Lampard, when a regime started emerging, it looked like it, it, it looks just it looked at it as if it was over for Cesar Spaquetta, but we mm-hmm. learned otherwise, and he never gives up. And now he became, he was pivotal to, you know, to our run in the Champions League, the, the last edition that we won. So I'm good. I'm, I'm glad that uh, he's extended this contract. And uh, mm-hmm. I mean, what's come to us, we'll sell him and at least make some profit. It, uh, it will not be on a free. So that's a good thing. One of the uh, great things I loved, uh, you know, that Marina does is that he has that safety net, uh, safety net if you prefer. 
that next shop a no player leaves on a free uh, let me just take a, a breeze uh, through the chart and thank some people there i want to say thank you to uh, tobago uh, he says big up guys big up nice to see you here and this is uh, uh tobago also saying hit the like button that's great to see and this is uh uh rolly rory jennings uh, hello everyone great content from this channel keep up the good work thank you i appreciate that and i sincerely do believe this is uh the real uh rolly jennings because i reached out to him to appear on the channel uh but i know i mean they can never tell if that was if that's the right person because people can actually change their uh, name display name uh, so uh coming to uh, back to you again um tobago um uh, you sorry uh, uh, uh fahim how about uh, the story that uh rudy gets uh, uh camp that they've been secretly talking to barcelona how worrying is that um it, yeah i mean I, I i don't to be honest with rudiger it's it's i don't know how long um he um how long it has left. i think is it two months left um till he's completely a free agent um yeah i think it's this is it two months or is this still uh, okay go ahead yeah so it's still worrying that we still not come to an agreement, but um, right now we can't even do contract new renewals at this moment because we're not allowed to because of the sanctions. So it probably allows his agent to explore his other options, which is Barcelona. Um, I've, I know that Christensen is pretty much agreed to go Barcelona. So Rudiger, uh, it's, 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 it's a weird one because we don't know what he wants like we really don't know yeah by the looks of it he wants to stay at chelsea but right now we can't offer him a new contract and mm. uh, if we can't do that then there's a chance he will um he will leave if if this ownership doesn't get done quickly enough yeah here's what i want to ask do you think the fact that maybe you know our players are beginning to, that is uh, the muslim contingents in our club at our club are concerned about you no, know, the possibility of the uh, uh, Ricketts becoming our new owners, and is, and as such, I'm making you know plans to be sure they're ready to leave it if that becomes the case. Um, yeah, I think they're aware with a lot of things. Um, like if if we expect that they are not aware, then we're kidding ourselves because I'm pretty sure they know what's going, what's going around with Chelsea Football Club with the Ricketts campaign and this and that. So of course mm. they know what's going on and maybe they are looking at other options as a potential move if they were to become owners of Chelsea Football Club because um, they are very far close, far into the process of buying the club. So so they have some concerns, they have some worries. They don't. They probably want to um, look at other options um, to escape from this uh, sort of ownership. But I think it's more to do with Chelsea not agreeing with um a contract with a higher wage with him because for me Rudiger deserves at least like he I think the club are offering him around 120 140k and he wanted around 180k per week and I think he probably deserves it and uh and uh Chelsea are just a bit bit too stingy around it and I don't know I think I think it's I think it's more to do with the uh, fact that it's his last big contract and he wants to make sure he gets the the sort of money that he deserves so yeah which is why i wouldn't blame him that much and again we are the mistake on the club and the club's part is uh, leaving the contract so late uh, and again it's only natural like you mentioned that rudiger looks for something uh, you know big at, at this stage of his career uh, and we must recognize as football is what this guy, what what he does for leaving football is what he that he plays football, to, you know, to be able to put food on the table for his family and and, and as such, at this point in his thirties, he wants something that can help, you know, secure his future to be sure he he has a, a brighter future if he the, the more the, the moment he retires from football, so we don't have to again I have to blame the club for leaving it so late and, and I've talked about it before maybe. The reason it was because uh, because under Frank he he was really uh, at the time he was really poor and Frank didn't handle it well. He made the situation worse for the uh, for the guy 
And if you ask a Rudiger himself, he'd tell you that whatever they say he was under Frank, that he really was, uh, he knew then that he wasn't uh, uh, in, at his best. You know, but that's, I don't know how the club would explain a letting his contract uh, run down. And that's crazy. We're losing two players, uh, one of mm -hmm. which is Andres Christensen, who you could argue is the closest thing to uh, Thiago Silva in, in terms of uh, style of play. And I was hoping that he renewed, he renews his contract. And when Thiago hangs his boot, he, he'd be available to, you know, to take up that mantle of leading the back line with so much calmness and, and cool-headedness that you uh, you know what what are your thoughts about the the, the situation of uh andreas christensen that now that it's definite definite that he's leaving chelsea football club um i i think it's he, he he's dealt this completely wrong in my opinion um i think it's because he's not really experienced in dealing with negotiations um he's been at chelsea for a very very long time not mm. really had like a big transfer or anything like that. So he's dealt it wrong. Um, even during the contract negotiations, um, he changed his agent from his dad to, I think, a proper agent um, mm. to discuss with negotiations uh, with other clubs. With Christensen, I, I, look, I, I think he's definitely replaceable, in my opinion. Um, I've always said that maybe uh, Trevor Chalaba is that saw replacement for um, Andres Christensen. Um, but the thing is, if he was to go to Barcelona, I I would just hope that we get a replacement because, um, like I said, we, if Christensen, Rudiger, um, if both of them go, we can't keep on relying on the old centre-backs, Thiago Silva mm -hmm. and Laquetta, to continuously play every single game because we're going to compete in the, Ch the Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup. Mm -hmm. Carabao Cup is too many games for Thiago Silva and Azpilicueta. And it's quite a lot of games for Chalaba to play as well. So the depth in centre back will will be massively de will massively decrease if if um both of them go, Rudiger and Christensen both leave. So I think I, I like I said, he, he's not Delta right. Um we just need to make sure we get a replacement for him. And with Rudiger, I think um this is more on the club's fault for not agreeing it earlier because mm. we managed to agree a deal for Thiago Silva easily. And uh, with Rudiger, he, he's he's not ch changed his stance. Christensen kept on changing it. He said, I want a longer, longer contract. I want a bit more money. The club have given that, but still he's, de he's declined the offer and decided to go Barcelona, whereas Rudiger has been... Has stayed the same um, in terms of his um, position. He just wants more money, just because it's his last contract um, in, in his football career. So this is on yeah. the club for not actually um, re reacting yeah. quick enough. At first, actually, people thought uh, that Rudiger was the one that's been a pro uh, problematic. It ends up being as uh, ends up being it ended up being uh, Andres Christensen because I, I even made a video thinking it that. Uh, Certainly, that uh, uh, Tony Rudiger was going to leave. That will we'll, that um, what's his name again? Andres Christensen was going to stay. It turns out that I was uh, wrong. Uh, but that's by mm. the way. I will breeze through the chat. Then we'll come back again and talk about some some question I had. I wanted to ask you regarding Sazas because this uh, situation. And this is Declared saying a uh, big up, big up to you, Declared, and blue morning to you. Uh, this is. Um, Fraser is saying Marina has messed up everything of Kuchila. Had we signed a Kunde in the summer, we would would have a better negotiation tactics a tactics for of Rudiger. But then again, we have to be factual here. Um, Sevilla they they saw knowing that we had already sold Kazuma to West Ham United, they wanted to take us for a ride. And I don't think it would have been wise to pay that much money for that player at that time. Uh, I, I wouldn't, yeah, Marina, has, she's not, and we we'll have to recognize that Marina is just a negotiator. Uh, if the club really wanted a, a player, she'd make sure we'd pay whatever that costs. But then again, it, it only makes, it, it makes sense that it makes perfect sense that Chelsea didn't allow Sevilla to take us for a ride because it would have been stupid to pay that much money. Your thoughts are for him. Um, the Sekunde one, I, it's, it's a weird one because I don't know where this sort of agreement came from where um, both clubs agreed on 
what was it like six four forty fifty million or something like that mm -hmm. and then they increased it to like 70 million like mm -hmm. did they not agree some sort of deal before because how would they have they managed to just say okay no we're increasing this offer now I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me um i think something must have went wrong in the negotiations um because if we had agreed 50 million then then what yeah. how come they how come they just backtrack that and decide you know what let me increase the offer we pretty much um yeah, yeah i, I didn't mention why i think that happened i think that happened because they knew they, they, mm. that we had already sold Kozuma. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. To West Ham United. So they felt like if that, if that is a surprise, it was a priority for us. They say that we, we, we signed Kunde or uh, we're in serious trouble. But uh, I think Tuko, thank goodness Tuko again, started, had already started trusting uh, uh, Trevor Chalova. So I think it, would, it wouldn't make sense to pay that much money because the, the, the clause was uh, 80 million pounds. Or euros, yeah. but that's a lot of money for Kunde. But now yeah. we'll pay much less. Always, almost half of the money, or they lose them on a free. If uh, <laughs> on on if that is an even cheaper amount. So, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you something again regarding as his actual credit situation. Uh, even though, even though his extended his contract, uh, uh, Barcelona still want him. Why do you think mm -hmm. that is? Um, because I think he's mainly because he's Spanish. Um, uh... Look, if 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 like I think I'm pretty sure Aspilicueta has some sort of some family in Spain, so I'm guessing um, that's the reason as well. So Aspilicueta, he knows how to play. He's played for Spain, so he knows how um, how some the system kind of works. Almost like um, what's his name, Enrique and Xavi, quite similar in terms of coaches. Um, mm. They play like possession football, control possession. So. I think that's what Xavi wants to do, um, wants to bring in his team. Also, Aspilicueta, experienced leader, captain. He he's got it all. He's got he's a complete package, in my opinion. Um, despite his age, and uh, his athleticism um, decreasing over time, but still he still he still brings value into your team, no matter what. Um, so I think yeah. it's more to do a profile sort of um, player that Xavi kind of wants. Because Aspilicueta, he can play right back, left back, center back, even at times. So I think Xavi likes to have those sort of players in his team. Someone that's versatile and um, quite reliable as well. So I'm not surprised um, Barcelona want him. Um, yeah, think... and even though even though he's not the most uh, um, the most vocal, I think you could argue that he's an exemplary professional, an exemplary leader i think it's good to have uh, in any team if he whenever he's on the pitch he doesn't give up he fights mm. until the man in the middle blows the whistle and, and that's that's a lot that's very important to me i hope he stays on uh, and i think thomas tucker would want to keep him uh he mm. knows uh, i think he's shown that he knows how to bring the best out of him and and the good thing is that when even if it's not playing he still supports uh, the team 100 percent and, and with that, I want to say again, um, take this opportunity to say uh, thanks to staff. Uh, even though he's not on the panel, he's, he's provided us uh, with great, great updates on what's going on uh, uh, around our club. Let me, uh, uh, again, uh, breeze through the chat because this is an interactive show. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you to, to Tobago for joining the panel. How are you doing, Tobago? Okay, wait, I can't hear Tobago. Okay, let me read uh, the comments. Uh, this is this uh, Fraser. So, well, you have to blame her. She's the director of football. Was she really? Uh, uh, Fahim, was uh, the Marina, is she Chelsea's uh, director of football? Um, I think so, yeah. I think she is. She's no, director. It wasn't. It, her role wasn't defined, honestly, but go ahead. Go ahead. You were saying she, something. She's a director of something. I don't know if it's no. I don't think it's no. Director of football is D D O F. I don't think she's a director of football. I think she's director of something else. Yeah, she wasn't. She was. She, she, her role wasn't defined as much as uh, that of uh, what's her name? What's his name? Pet Petacek's role wasn't also. I let me say isn't because they still the her role isn't defined. And Petacek's Petacek's role isn't defined. It's just from outside you can look at things and assume okay, this is what Marina does. And I think if you go to the website, uh, website, it said something like 
Marina is the one that decides whether the club can pay such and a such an amount for a player, and she decides what player gets a raise or not. So nothing mm-hmm. specifically says that she is the director of football, and that's probably the reason she was able, you know, she's been able to coexist uh, with Petacek in terms of signing players and then, uh, you know, uh, extending player contracts. Uh, yeah, uh, n- let me go through that. Uh, he said, uh, who is negotiating for Chelsea FC? She does. Uh, she's Roman's right hand. I am not saying I am uh, Marina out. I am saying you have to blame her for this country. Yeah, to a certain measure, you have to blame her. But in terms of people that always uh, blame her for, for uh, you know, contract uh, no- negotiations that fall, fall through, that fell through or, you know, signings that we'll try that fell through, I think those aren't, you can't say that uh, they are her fault because she's just a negotiator, if you ask me. Uh, Tobago here. Uh, Tobago, how you doing, brother? I'm good in yourself. Brilliant. I, I can't uh, complain. Tobago here said Sevilla wanted to mug us. Oh, we agreed a lesser fee, then they increased it. Uh, uh, so should we still buy? No, I'd say no. Uh, uh, your thoughts on that, Tobago? Yeah, uh, to be honest, Sevilla uh, was too clever there because, like, we already agreed a, a smaller fee, and then when we, we sold Kate Zuma, they increased the price. Also, mm. I want to talk with uh, Fraser about Marina. Marina's job is just to negotiate the deals, uh, buying new players and stuff. So it's, it's, her role is not to to negotiate the contract with our current players. If if that guy can just check in the website, he will see everything. Yeah. How about, how about the, the situation of Cesar Slocator? Why do you think Barcelona is still coming after him? Uh, to be honest, they, they want the guy for, for his uh, experience of uh, playing football. So they want to add that to the younger players mm-hmm. so that they'll, they'll be taught by, by that guy. So hopefully he won't go. I don't want him to go. You don't want who to go? Uh, uh, says like yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I also don't want him to go. But at first I made a video uh, that, that I think you could say things were still all rosy then. Uh, I think, you know, because I was thinking, my thoughts then was that I think this is the best time to let him go. He's won everything there is to win with Chelsea Football Club. I think there's nothing he hasn't won. Uh, because usually uh, the fact is uh, Chelsea are always reluctant to offer a long-term contract to players over the age of 30. And he's, he's in that category. So I didn't want it. My, my, uh, my fear then was that if he stays longer, it might come, we might come to a point where you know, the relationship uh, falls apart and then he leaves on a bad note. So, had it, but I think given the situation we found ourselves in, I'd want him to stay until it is clear that we're able to sign new players or except if uh, if uh, the new owners uh, come in and then decide we have to, uh, you know, restructure that policy of not offering long-term contracts to uh, players over the age of 30, I think, but right now, I do want him to stay because there's no clarity yet on what we're what we what we're able to do when come uh, this summer. And and this is uh, <clears throat> my Scuba Sikuba Sikuba. With all due respect to uh, British government, don't involve politics and football. And unfortunately, that hardly happens. That day, do you know the impact you have? Put these players and the coach enough is enough. Yeah, I hope they hear. I hope they're listening. Uh, good to see new YouTube channels with great content. Thank you very much, EGTV. Uh, we appreciate that support. And please, if you haven't, make sure to like the video so that uh, it will push the Google algorithm to put the stream, push the stream to more uh, people. Uh, and this is uh, Marina. Marina's job is to negotiate uh, deals with other clubs when we buy players. That's her main job. Uh, Big up to you, uh, 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 Mikhail, and blue morning to you. Again, yesterday, I uh, thank you for joining uh, yesterday when it was just I talking to the audience. You made it worthwhile, and I appreciate that. And let me see if we have something else here. Demasio said we agreed 50 million euros then. And yeah, and then 
boom, they skyrocketed the, 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 the price given the fact that they were well aware that we've sold uh, consumer to West Ham United. Uh, we can just say entire Chelsea board messed up. I think, yeah, a lot of times they, they're not perfect. Uh, again, they have their issues and some of them I really would want to leave the club. This is why I'm glad Todd Bolly hopefully takes over Chelsea uh, uh, and makes sure everything has a plan each transfer window. I hope that happens. What I really want from new owners is they let Toko decide what type of players he wants and don't spend over price. Uh, make sure everything is spent correctly. That's my wish for this summer. Yep. Uh, um, and not spend recklessly, which is the case of Manchester United. They've spent over a billion, but you can argue even at that they haven't solved the problem they have in their team. It got worse recently, actually. Rudiger must stay. That's what, what you wish. And hopefully all this, uh, um, hopefully the board and, and the new owners uh, see it that way and understand how important he's been uh, to uh, Thomas Tuchel. Uh, he, EGTV says, Coach, I have a question. Do you think that Chelsea would have less success with the new owner than what you had with Roman Abramovich? Here's the thing. I think we should all talk about this, and I'll come to you, Fahim and uh, Tabagu. Roman wasn't perfect. Uh, uh, Roman, there will never be another Roman, that's for sure. Uh, but the, the area, one thing I'd like any new anybody that is the next... Uh, person or group that become uh, becomes new Chelsea owners to do is, you know, to let managers who are successful, to let managers who are doing well keep their job because you could argue there are some managers under Roman Abramovich that we, we cannot justify their firing. When you look at their situation, you cannot say really well, uh, this man des uh, deserves to be fired. A few of them, at least two I can name. I can say something about Jose Mourinho's uh, first stint at Chelsea. He didn't deserve to be fired the way he did. Or uh, Carlo Ancelotti didn't deserve to be fired the way he did. And that fi hiring and firing managers, in some cases you can say unjustly, is the reason why uh, since uh, the, the, the reign of Roman Abramovich, Chelsea Football Club hasn't had a period of time where we dominated for a long while. Our success since his reign has been patches. It's been a, a bit of success here, and then we have issues for a year or two, or sometimes there's a time it was uh, three years, but we haven't dominated at the stretch of time. Have we let Jose Mourinho stay during his first stint? We, we could have. We would have dominated the Premier League for a long while. Had we let Carlo Ancelotti stay, that we could have done the same under his reign. Uh, but uh, the hiring and firing of manager hasn't let us uh, had a period of time where he we had a stretch of you know success, dominated the Premier League for a while. Uh, your thoughts for him? Um, to answer the question, um, do, do we have do, will we have less success? Um, from what I'm hearing, with uh, it depends what the owner's ambitions are. It stems from. From the top, and then it goes back down to the uh, fans because Roman mm. set Roman set a, such a high standard that um, us Chelsea fans now have, um, like sacking managers if they're not doing well, and then uh, bringing in top class players in. I think right now we will face reality with like like other many clubs um, like Liverpool and uh, I don't know, um, you know all the other other top clubs, but. With Roman, I think he he set that high standard, um, and then we now have that high standard as a fan base. With the new owner, it, it just depends on their standards. If they set a high standard, it will continue, and we will continue being successful. I don't think it will be less successful. I think it will just continue being winning trophies almost every season. But if let's say um, this new owner decides to spend less money and not actually build the squad. Then yes, potentially it could happen. Um, less success can still happen, but it it, it just it just it depends on the new owner. Anyway, in my opinion, yeah, it depends. And again, if they if they are uh, if the plan is to build on what Roman Abramovich has done, and like I've established, the only issue under Roman was uh, some managers who you could argue were fired unjustly. Uh, mm. Some like yeah. I've mentioned, two of them. Um, 
uh, uh, Jose Mourinho and Carlo Ancelotti, I think, should have kept their job, especially Jose Mourinho's first stint. And, the and, and, and again, yeah. So if the, the new one... owner comes on, comes in and, and build on what Roman has in place, is fine. Then uh, they will be so they will maintain uh, that what Chelsea that is that level of standard uh, that uh, Roman Abramovich has set. But there's a risk where when they come in and try to hit the reset button to start from scratch, that's where there's a problem. That's where they risk not being able, you know, to to uh, that is that that's where the risk of having less success um, could happen. Uh, your thoughts, uh, Tobago. Uh, first of all, I think. It depends uh, on our new owners who who will be our new owners. Hopefully, not the rickets. And then, to be honest, if you want to be successful, we need uh, we need to stop uh, that process of uh, firing and hiring new coaches uh, every season. We need to have a, at least a, a structure just to give the coach three years uh, uh, strict, and then. If the the coach is not working for us, we get a new coach. Then they also, if you look yeah, at Barcelona, go ahead. If you're looking at Barcelona after mm-hmm. Pepe, Pepe and Enrique, they lost their structure, and now they're having Xavi. Their structure is coming back. I think also for us, we need to have a, a certain structure, also certain players that we need to buy, not just a by any top class players uh, with mm-hmm. uh, big, big bugs for nothing, and then they end up being uh, flops. So hopefully, we get a proper uh, owners, and then they must just add on what uh, Roman Ibrahimovic uh, did for us, because like everything is, is so solid. They need just to add, then they will be fine. But if they want to change everything, that will be a massive problem. Mm-hmm. I think, and I yeah, think so. again, again, uh, we cannot highlight that enough. If they try to change everything, then uh, the risk of them being lo- uh, less successful will be very much in motion. Uh, but if they build on what Roman has done, then they have a chance to do even better than Roman did. And there was something that came to mind that I wanted us to uh, talk about. Yes, what I wanted us to talk about, you, you have alluded to that. The fact that, uh, you know, once you change a manager... The new manager now has have a job and will come in and try to implement a, their own uh, identity or style of play because there's no existing, you know, identity in the team. And what, every time you switch manager, you have a problem. So that's why we've not been able, you know, to sustain a success. You know, we, there has never been a stretch of time where we've had success. Every time, for instance, we moved, that was it, uh, from... Uh, was it from Conte to it was from Conte to Sari, two managers with two different kinds of you know style of play? I'm surprised that Sari was able to even do as do do uh, that, that is do well because he did quite well. He didn't. It, it wasn't a bad stint for him either. So let me breeze uh, through the chat again. And here we have uh, Marina. It's a price negotiator. Yes, that's what it, uh, she is. I learned that from staff myself. I must say. And this is uh, Marina is to blame of a Kepa. Uh, you can't necessarily uh, say say that. No, I don't think so. And uh, uh, I hope new owners will make sure everything has a real structure. Who is a DOF? The scout. Everything will be clean. And I think uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, people. Uh, asking for the club to go for a DOF. We have put the check, although he's been in a role that isn't properly defined. He has proven that that's a job he can do quite well. Uh, for him, your thoughts on promoting on defining uh, Petr Cech's role as the DOF? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think we should get someone experienced in that role. Um, someone that can communicate well with uh, the board and to call. So someone mm-hmm. that can understand what Tuchel wants as well. So the profile, the players, um, Tuchel needs. So that communication is important. I don't know if Petr Cech, I'm not sure if he's ready for that role. I don't know. I, I To be honest, I don't know what his role is, to be honest. like it, It's something like technical director or something like that. I don't know what that actually means and what he actually does. But I think if we were to get someone experienced 
mm. in the UF department, someone that can understand football. Because right now we don't have many footballing brains in in the board. We have a lot of business minded people in the board in the boardroom. So we need we need someone that can understand football as well. And uh, DOF, someone that's experienced, will help us do that actually. Yes, and again, I want to thank staff for providing us with all the great uh, updates. He messaged me all the updates that we're talking about here with uh, most of them with. Uh, clear details on the situation and i want to say please if you haven't go check out cfc for him great channel great content and great individual also with over time uh from friends have become a brothers and i'm friends with him because he produces objective con object objectively crafted content no clickbait nothing always a truthful so i i am um, i am always happy to have him on the panel uh tobago let me breeze uh, through the channel again again because this is an interactive show and then i will come back uh, to you uh for your opinion uh um yes kepa was the buyout clause a uh, stick to american sports i know he's uh talking to a uh, phantom of many topics yes kepa we had to pay the buyout uh clause because we're in dire, we found ourselves in dire situation then due to a table court towards behavior, he refused to return. And we wanted uh, Alison Baker, but Baker preferred uh, Liverpool. So that's, by the way, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, breaking news. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I, I get it. Uh, you're not going to get us, uh, but um, good for you. I hope that ho happens. It's, it's wishful thinking. Uh, big up Kuchila and Pana. Big up to you, uh, Queen of the House. Always good to see you. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Keep saying that. Uh, just saw it on the news. It's a possibility, I hope, because uh, that's not something to joke about. I hope it is a fact. Um, yes, and, and, and Kirby has it, actually. Okay, now, I think a Chelsea must not allow uh, Aspie and Rudiger to leave. I think uh, this will affect the whole... Um, I think this will affect the whole team negatively and it will bring attention between coaching staff and, of course, uh, us a fan. Um, again, that's how you saw it. Uh, Louise, Mikhail, Fury, wherever you are, join, it, join us on, uh, on YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel and also click the like button because we will do a giveaway once we hit at least, let me say, I'm not going to wait till we get to 100, at least 60 people because we are celebrating 1,000 uh, subscribers and also monetization of the channel. So I wouldn't wait for us to get to 100. That's a way of me of us saying thank you to all supporters like you, but you have to be with us on uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, your thoughts, um, Fahim? Um, I think uh, it brings frustration for Tuchel. Um Mm. Like if let's say Rudiger, who's been the most consistent player for Tuchel, as per mm. and the most reliable player for Tuchel, if they were to leave, both of them experienced. If they were to leave, you're just left with pretty much, I don't know. He's already not have, he's not already has his squad yet. This is not Tuchel's squad, full, um, mm. it's full squad yet. So, if them two were to leave, then I can I can see Tuchel being frustrated because a lot of things have been going against Tuchel in terms of um, pressure, media, journalists asking his dumb questions and then mm -hmm. him having to answer it and then Rudiger, contract negotiations, Aspie, uh, new ownership. Like, there's so much going on in Tuchel's head. I think, um, I think if the club were to let Rudiger leave um, this summer, I think I think Tuchel, Tuchel will be frustrated and uh, I don't think it will bring tension. I think it it will build up tension, in my opinion. I don't think it will bring up to the, um, the highest uh, level. Uh, yeah, I think, I think I've learned uh, uh, with the, within the past of, uh, week, the past few weeks that Tuchel is a, talk about somebody uh, being a cool-headed. He's a prime example of that. Uh, his responsive, responses, you, you wouldn't even show that he's worried to any certain measure. He's uh, carried himself very well. You know, he's, uh, you think that somebody like Joseph Mourinho or, or Antonio Conte will at some point lose it. But uh, he's been calm. His responses has been uh, brilliant. And I don't think this will get to him. He understands the situation very well. And he understands there's only much that the club can do if the players are bent on leaving. A prime example being that of uh, uh, 
Andreas Christensen, you see how he spoke about Andreas Christensen. And he said that, that if, for the fact that, you know, what we know about the situation of Andreas Christensen, that he's not going to drop him up because of that. Uh, Tobago, no. before I come to you, I want to say uh, thank you for uh, a gal for finding time to join in this uh, great question that we've addressed. Uh, and I hope I'll find time to receive or uh, procure whenever you're live. I appreciate that. Uh, let me see if I, I hope new owners will make sure. Okay, we've read that before. Uh, big up to you, Quinn. I've also read that before. And please do make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, bigger perspective and panel and chat, not you, Egal. Okay, here, uh, April Fools, that we know. Uh, if, I, if, if a real Roman is back, I'd be popping champagne here. You know that. So I, I knew before time that something like uh, the April Fool chat messages will most definitely be in the chat. UK has to leave sanctions for Roman to come back, guys. I don't, yeah, that, but I don't think that will happen. That ship had already sold. And Roman, again, I'm going to keep repeating myself, wouldn't uh, want to come back because the fact is every time there's an international crisis uh, that Russia is involved, they will target him. Remember, he's already started yeah. having visa issues even before uh, the, the Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine and crisis. Uh, now, Fahim, are you still there? Your thoughts on whether Roman would want to come back, even if the opportunity calls? I think um, with Roman, he loves Chelsea, um, but he hates the government. That's one thing I'll say. Um, mm. The government have made his life a lot difficult, even before the war. Um, he couldn't actually enter the country, so mm -hmm. there was obviously tension there. Um well, we all know that Roman loves um, Chelsea, and we all know that he wouldn't want to sell Chelsea just like that. Um, it was just he, he's he's just facing unfortunate circumstances right now. Um, and right now he looks like he has to he has to accept this sort of um consequence that he, he didn't really want to be in. So, yeah, we just have to accept it and we have to move on. All good things come to an end, they don't last forever. So, yeah, so yeah, that, we, we, yeah, we really do have to move on. Tobago, your thoughts. I think, and I think we've lost a uh, tobacco. Let me just breeze uh, through the comments. Uh, Joy the boy said, Marina uh, also kept King Droba when Roman uh, uh, Dean wanted to give him a contract. So if Marina Dean do that, would we have won the Champions League in 2012? What? Well, I'm not sure how long she's been at Chelsea. I didn't even, I knew nothing about her in 2012, to be honest. So I can uh, say uh, what's going on. So Tobago, your your thoughts on on uh, on that? Can you hear us? We, I can't hear you, Tobago. Mm, I think he's on the. I don't think he's on the show. Oh, sorry. Apologies, uh, Tobago. Do you have any anything to add before I go through no, uh, the comments yeah, in the hey, chat? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can. You were backstage. Yeah, I, I, oh, sorry. I think. To be honest, uh, Roman Abramovich uh, won't be won't be able to come back because the treatment he got from UK uh, from three years back uh, when they can, uh, they didn't renew his visa, now mm. they sanction him. It's unfair to him, and then I think it's affecting him a lot. If you saw his recent pictures, you can see that guy is so stressed. So for his mental health, health he needs just to let go of Chelsea. Hopefully. One day he will come and see us, and then he move on from there. But for now, I don't think he will come back. Yeah, I don't think it will make sense to come back either. Would you come back if you were Roman, even if the opportunity calls? Uh, no. You? Yeah, would you come back if you were Roman? Um, even if know. the opportunity calls for you to come back. No, I think you know what the, 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 this government's already been proven that they always. They never liked Roman. Like they didn't need to sanction him. They have no. It's not. Clue. It's not just about this government. Remember, the US didn't haven't sanctioned him because. Uh, yeah, yeah no, that's what I mean. That's why I yeah. mean. The UK just have some sort of like, something. Well, they have something against Roman, and they. Uh, who knows what happens in the future? They can use something very small and make it into a very big thing, and then it can. I don't know. Cause more problems for Roman. I, I don't. There's no point for Roman to just get back into this um, sort of problems again and again and again. So I think he'll just have to move on from it. 
Yeah, uh, and again, once again, I want to say thank you to uh, Star for all the great, great uh, updates he sent me. I appreciate that. That means a lot uh, to me. Uh, let me go through the chat again, and we can come back to the next topic we have. Smash that like button, people. Please do that so that the Google algorithm will push the stream to more people. And remember, we will do a giveaway today, and it's a way to say thank you to our supporters. We've gotten to 1,000 uh, uh, subscribers plus, and we've also been monetized. So that's a great news for us. And, and uh, we couldn't have gotten here where we are today without uh, you, without people like Stab, Pierre, and other people that have been on the panel. But I'll do a special video uh, for that. Uh, uh, Stab uh, saying uh, stick to American sports is, uh, I wouldn't say that. I think uh, I think you jumped in the middle of uh, the argument there, but that's up to you guys in, 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 the, in the stream. Uh, in the chat. Uh, actually, he was able to come to England. He just was not allowed to do business. Except, yeah, that's a serious uh, restriction. He owns a business uh, uh, such as Chelsea Football Club because whether we like it or not, Chelsea is a business. So the restriction, uh, because usually usually the Roman likes to work. He likes to interact with the players. And when he does that now, it will be perceived as work. So that's a serious restriction for somebody who owns a business. Uh, uh, in the country. So yeah, that's an issue for me. If if you if I were a man, I would move forward. I wouldn't like to find myself in a situation where every now and then, whenever there's international crisis and my country is involved, I get uh, sanctioned. Uh, Derek, no worries. I have that person on. <laughs> if Kachula didn't highlight, I wouldn't even see. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Derek. Okay, he just repeated his comment. Uh, Phantom, yeah, I did not like what he said. What he said, you could say, I wouldn't call it uh, racist, uh, honestly, I have to be honest. They have the issues. And, and um, let me see again. That's a good way to look at it, Tobago. What with a lot of mental health issues going on? Yep, I think. I think. Uh, uh, big up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the cloud. Uh, nice to see you, Nick Blue. Blue morning to you. The, one of the biggest supporters of this channel. Good to see you. I am on about a pre-sanctions up. I don't understand what's racist and what's not anymore. Yep, uh, okay, that's a great area. Uh, um, it's like saying, okay, please, uh, let's uh, move on from that argument. And uh, here we have a uh, first super chat, and it's my, from my friend and brother, Phantom of Many Topics. He says, uh, welcome to monetization. I appreciate that, and I will forever remember that you were the first uh, to, you know, Give us a super chat here on Trust of Perspective. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I sincerely do appreciate that. Uh, Fraser said, did you see what a Ricketts family did? They used the Daily Mail to target a Todd Bolly having a better a bet firm in Russia. Yes, uh, that brings to mind uh, <clears throat> something else that um, staff sent me saying, now all four bidders have issues. Your thoughts, mm -hmm. Fahim, and, and does that scare you? I mean, I think we all know that every bidder had issues in, in their history. I, I, I'm not sure what's been happening. I have not been reading enough um, news articles yesterday, um, so I'm not sure what's been going on. Um, <laughs> what, is there something happened to Todd Bowley or something? The only thing no. I'm aware of is the protest. He's saying, he, look, so he's saying uh, because uh, staff sent me that, but I didn't have the time to read it all through. says, did you see what Ricketts family did? He's blaming, I'm not sure it was uh, Ricketts, but because if it was out there, it will eventually come up. Mm -hmm. the, the, you get my point now? And there's, yeah. a, there's a possibility also, uh, I, I believe you, Fresno, they no ruling out if it was sponsored by some of the other bidders too. It says, uh, uh, did you see what Ricketts family did? Uh, they used a daily mail to target Todd Bolly. The part that's, I'm, I'm going to read, uh, uh, the Bolly having a betting firm in Russia. That's a, that's a huge issue. Your thoughts? Yeah, this, this is so much. They're, they're just trying to um, play like... Uh, trying to make other people look bad um because they already know that the campaign and um, no to the rickets is already massive and they're trying to deflect this sort of campaign to, to on someone else and that is todd bowley um i don't know if if they're if they're using the daily mail to target Todd bully but if they were i wouldn't be surprised because they the one thing i'm 
really concerned about is that why are they so um despite with why are they so up for buying Chelsea like with all this hate and and no to the Ricketts campaign how are they still going on um pursuing to buy Chelsea football club that's something that confuses me because if you got so yeah. much mm-hmm. hate from the Go fans ahead. you've got so much hate from the fans and rightly so why are you still continuing to buy Chelsea? We just it would just get even worse from from then onwards. Yeah, yeah. To be to be honest, I have to say uh, um, I'm really worried. Uh, but we've talked about it, and it, and actually, when Stav and I had a private conversation, and I, mean, I don't want us to you know keep dwelling on the ownership issues. We have other issues in uh, transfers that we can be talking about until we have a new development in terms of our. our the ownership uh, situation, but the fact is, yeah, I think I'm concerned. The fact that they all, all the all the uh, that pushback they're getting from the fans, uh, the the Chelsea trust and all that, and some uh, 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 no former Chelsea players, they're still pushing. To me, I argue it maybe because they've been guaranteed that they're going to win because that's the only reason why they should still uh, they're still pushing because a sensible person at this point, a sensible business owner at this point, will say. It doesn't look like this is going to work. It's looking like we're not going to get a chance to become new owners of Chelsea Football Club. So why spend more money? They give up, but it doesn't look like that's the case. And 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 given this comment from Frizz, oh, if this is correct, if that means it's gotten to the extent that they're playing dirty right now. Everybody's trying to dig up dirt on on, on you know on all those vying to become the, the new owners of the club. Uh, your your thoughts, uh, um, uh, Tobago. Um, to be honest, I think now is a is a is a catch fight because like uh, they they dig so so many information about uh, the Ricketts family. Now they're digging more information about uh, football. So I just mm. read now he paid uh, 120 million last year September to buy shares uh, in Russia, but the the company is suspended due to. Uh, uh, the the war between Russia and Ukraine, so that's a big mm. problem also. So I'm, I'm worried, man. Yeah, I, I am worried. Uh, uh, and uh, the, one of the updates uh, that I see is that all four bidders now have issues. What if it gets to a point where the government says that neither of you, you know, will get a chance to become new Chelsea owner? What would that do to us? Uh, we, you you get the point be. now. Yeah, yeah it would, it would, I don't know. I'm hearing like, I think I heard like a long time ago, right? Like, um, if we were not to find any successful bidder, then I think it was something about a point deduction or something like that, or like something like that. I can't remember the administration, but, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, administration or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but I think, I think, I don't think that will happen because uh, uh they've allowed Roman to. You know, inject money to make sure the club is still being run properly. I don't think that will happen, but it's still a scary situation. Go ahead, for me, for him. Yeah, it's still a scary situation. There's there's a lot of um, things going on behind the scenes. Um, like for example, you know how um, Roman got poisoned with that um, chemical. Um, that happened mm. three weeks ago. Happened three weeks ago, and we heard it like what a few days ago. We're getting these updates quite late, and. Uh, there's things going on right now that we we've not gonna are not gonna hear until like two weeks later. So uh, I don't know what will happen if we don't get a successful bidder. I don't think that will happen. Um, I think mm-hmm. the government, yeah. I think let the let me go through. I don't think it will happen either. Let me go breeze through the chat and I'll bring in Phantom and Phantom. First of all, thank you for the donation. And again, if you know Stav, I don't think he means uh. It's no, no, right. I, it, no, it's, 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 Stav hasn't really come at me. Um, it's the Marsden person that I have blocked. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, like, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. Stav, uh, Stav is just yeah. his opinion. No, he no, just, no, no, he, no, yeah, Stav, fr- no. Stav hasn't come at me. It's the, uh, like I said, it's the Marsden person that I've blocked. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, so okay, anyway, yeah, because people are in the chat yeah. misunderstood that. I know you and Stav. Yeah. You guys are very uh, strong with your opinions, oh, no, no, and no, you no. oppose I, each other. I, I, hey, but very, it's been uh, it's I'm, been respect for each other also. No, no, no I'm very thick skinned. Um, so I, I just want to say on the Ricketts thing, okay? If I'm Ricketts, mm-hmm. I have watched all of this, 
And virtually, I'm one of the only person who has said, if Ricketts is coming on board, I'm quitting Chelsea. The rest of you have just all said, I'm going to get very, very mad, but I'm going to stay with Chelsea. Oh, no, for him, is leaving. Not just no, you. No. For him, says he leaves Chelsea. Okay, so 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 there's me and the other guy. That's very few because when I said thirty percent, that's probably too high. Probably like maybe five to ten percent of the fans at the mm, most. Mm-hmm, that's hardly mm. anything, right? Because most of your reaction is just kind of like Arsenal. Oh, we hate the you know the ownership, but we're staying. Or you, Man United, we hate the ownership, but we're staying. So the Ricketts are going like, well, you're just going to complain for a while, and then you're can just I, you know can I, can I you're going to stay with the club anyway. So why should we fear that, you know, you hate us because you're still going to love the club and you're still going to show up at the games and buy the merchandise and whatever, do everything else, too. So I don't think that that the Ricketts family is really worried because they would only be worried if you left the Chelsea fanship. And as far as, um, like I said, I'm still going to appear on the people who are my friends, but if I come here, it'd be as a rival team fan and not as a Chelsea fan if the Ricketts purchased the team. Because, like I said, my loyalty is only since 2018, and that's not very deep at all. Co- coach, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you have an every right to do whatever suits you if mm-hmm. that happens. Uh, like, again, we all, we all deal with situations differently. Uh, I, I use, okay, Fahim, you wanted to say something, sorry. Yeah, I'm not saying that I will completely not support the club. I would just say distance myself. And there's reasons why I would distance myself because Mm -hmm. I prioritise my personal life over Chelsea. It's all about, I think a lot of people have, they prioritise Chelsea way too far, in my opinion. Like, there's other stuff in life that I prioritise and that doesn't make me less of a fan. Everyone Mm -hmm. has their own way to support the club. You can't just support one way. That's not possible. So the one thing I have an issue with is the supporting the club is not supporting the Ricketts. The same, let's say, right, let's say hypothetically that the Ricketts become owners of Chelsea Football Club. The fans that say um, to other fans distancing themselves from the club because of religion reasons or personal reasons, Mm -hmm. let's say they they call them what? Oh, fans that we don't want you at the club. Fake fans, let's say, okay, but those same fans, let's say, support the club. You're if you're buying tickets to go to the club, uh, to go to the matches. If you're buying merchandise from the club, mm-hmm. that's that's leading. You're literally supporting the club that ultimately supports the Ricketts. Mm-hmm. So, if you're spending money on that, then it's it's very it's very hypocritical for you to say. Oh, the fans that distance themselves are fake fans and fans that we don't want at this club because they don't want, they don't want um, uh, hey, these sort of fans. Yeah, I think I agree with you, and here's why I agree with you. I'm, I, I, I don't think anybody has any right to judge any other person given how they decide to deal with the certain situation. I think you must respect everybody's decision. Say what you want to say, but don't come across. Don't try to disrespect anybody because of how. Uh, uh, um, they decided to deal with the with the situation at hand. I wouldn't you know say that, and I appreciate you. That is your input right now. I think it's important for people not to disrespect other people because of how they decide to deal with the situation. Because this is a serious situation, and we all some people will. Yeah, we have a lot of Muslim contingents at the club. We have a lot of Muslim followers. Uh, you know they see it differently. Some people are deeply rooted in their religion. Some people get so, that is extremely offended when you abuse them racially. Uh, given, uh, like for instance, I know Phantom become more, Phantom became more serious about it when he heard when they, what they said about Asian people. In my case, even before I heard that they referred to black people as the problem with you people, my case, I uh, became even more serious. But with the way I deal with it is to make give people the, the voices to speak against the rickets, to make the club understand if this happens, you're practically, you know, pushing us back to the days where there were racial racial discrimination at the club, of which DJ Saw 17 mentioned that we're still paying for racial issues we've had at the club in the past. So why should we accommodate such people? That it will be, be a PR nightmare. I think some of our sponsors will distance themselves from us 
I think some fans also will start supporting Chelsea and it will be difficult for Chelsea to gain more supporters uh, in some areas in, in the world. So I'll come back to you, Phantom, if you don't mind. I want to breeze up through the chat again because this is an interactive show. But more importantly, I appreciate you being the first, uh, you know, uh, the, the giving us a first super chat here in, uh, in, in the channel. It means a lot to me. I appreciate your friendship and everything, brother. Uh, and uh, DJ, uh, this is my favorite thing to read every day here. DJ says, big up Chelsea perspective. A very good blue morning to everyone. Yes, a very good blue morning to everybody that's watching and to those in the chat. Uh, that means a lot to us. It is the blue morning show. Yes, so it is good to say blue morning to you all. Um, big up DJ Sav. This is just, hey, y'all. Hey to you too, uh, uh, VJ. Nice to see you. Uh, and he has uh, uh, staff saying, Derek, you're going to use, okay, uh, the race card. Uh, please, let's not play the race card here. And I don't think staff, uh, I don't think he's a racist. I've known him for a while. Uh, he's not racist. Uh, but that's, by the way, yes, it was yesterday night. And uh, good morning from here on a Romana. This is Onyeka watching live from Togo. And love, bro. Yes, Onyeka, uh, Obimka, nice to see you around, brother. Uh, I hope you're doing well. And please, if you haven't, wherever you're watching from, uh, do click on the like button on YouTube and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And join us on YouTube so that you get the chance to win $50 as we celebrate uh, 1K subscribers and also monetization. Uh, you participate if you're here. And uh, Joe the Boy, this is just, uh, let me see if like, there's anything to read here. Roman, I'm just joining now. What are the topics today? Uh, Again, my name is not Roman. My name is Kochila. And uh, we're talking about um, the fact, uh, we first we started with transfers, but because this is a fan-driven show, this is an interactive show, it's easy to deviate from the main topic to talk about uh, 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 the concerns of the people in the chat, talk about the concerns of... Uh, you know, address their questions and their inputs. So this, we'll talk about uh, the fact that uh, Pagliuca, uh, I think he's been rejected already or being rejected. I, I have to, I, I have to revisit what staff said to me. We've talked about Rudy Gas contract situation, and if anything comes up about, about Roman, we will talk about it. Of course, Roman is in the picture because he is the owner of the club. And um, Joy the boy, uh, let me see. What we have here again, um, yes, please chill, calm down. We're all one family here. Staff is not racist. I think every, a lot of people can confirm that. Um, yeah, supporters, uh, Chelsea FC 52 years, a multicultural club, gives it, give it a rest. Yeah, please, please, let's start talking about the racist thing. It's just a distraction. Uh, Blue Morning Chelsea Perspective, and Blue Morning to you two, Thai Talks. Nice to see you here, my brother. Great channel. Make sure to go check out Thai Talks YouTube channel. If you haven't, please do subscribe. Um, let me see if I have anything I want us to address here. Okay, uh, this is staff. Uh, probably that pissed him off, I know, but that's okay. Uh, he will deal with it very well, I know. Well, EPL will be back tomorrow. Yes, we can wait. It's a, it's good to see. Uh, I'm trying to get something. Okay, I am leaving Chelsea as well. If free kids take over again, again, a lot of people are. And again, like I've established, we deal with things uh, differently. Let me read that again. I am leaving Chelsea as well. If free kids take over. I am because I am Muslims. Yes, like I've established that some people are deeply rooted in their religion. And in the case of Phantom of Many Topics, his people were insulted by the Ricketts family. And I'm a black person. And I have Muslim friends who I love so much as a Christian also. Uh, I, I think uh, I, they have learned that they inter interpret the, the, the Ricketts interpret, interpret the Bible differently, not what it should be. They, I think you should love even no matter the religion of other people, you should show them uh, some love. And uh, this is uh, from him. Uh, and let's see what we have here. Big up uh, big up to you, Justin. Nice to see you around, brother. It's not easy to walk away after. It's not easy for you, exactly. That's uh, you. Uh, friends. Oh, can you just time out the Rickets forever? I, if that was possible, we'd do that here on Chelsea Perspective. Uh, Pierre Kakari, uh, Pierre, nice to see you here. I hope you're doing well. And I hope to have you join the panel as soon as we're sp switching uh, the topic. Um, okay, while I go through the comments, uh, uh, you want to add anything before I bring in uh, bring in a DJ, Phantom? 
yes, I do. Uh, like I said, um, I have nothing against Stav. It's the uh, Marsden person that I bought, and mm-hmm. but uh, neither here nor there. That I don't really care about that. Um, as and in general, uh, people who are plastic fans or new fans, we don't care if you're longtime fans or the senior fans yeah, don't. Yeah, you know, yeah. we care, you know, we the, most people don't care if yeah. you know. It's like people like uh, Stav, even even though I haven't blocked him, he thinks like I really care whether. Uh, you know, I I don't really care whether he approves of me or not. I'm here for you, Coachella. That's yeah. the only person I'm here for. Everybody else, if they don't like me, that's fine. If they like me, that's fine. You know, no, that, that, uh huh. Go ahead. This is the problem that I I have um with certain fan base. Um, like, okay, you've been a long uh, of what, fifty years supporting Chelsea. That's good. That that's that's well done. But the, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a better fan or a better fan than someone else. Everyone has their own way to support um, Chelsea Football Club. It's not my fault um, that I wasn't he- here long enough in this world, and uh, it doesn't make any sense why you should count, um, I've been here, I've been supporting Chelsea for this long, therefore I I uh, should be respected more, or I should be treated better. No, no, like, if you're a supporter mm-hmm. of Chelsea Football Club, we are all equal. And right. there's no one way to support the club. There's many ways to support the club. Yep, well, yep, it, indeed. It, and in this it, comment it, right here, go ahead, go ahead, Phantom. Oh, okay. I'm I'm saying that um, me being blocked on Facebook, getting 30 day, um, you know, Facebook jail bans and stuff like that. I learned one thing. If you don't like someone, just block them. Because if you get into an arguments with them, then you know you might be that they might turn you in, report you, especially if you curse at them or if you go up mm. to the stage and slap them like Will Smith or whatever. Instead of reacting, just don't react to them at all because they're probably you know looking for a reaction from you. So if you just ignore them completely, then they're out of your life. You know, I'm not going to go after every uh, single person that you know doesn't like what I say or, or whatever, or comes after me personally or doesn't like Chinese people or whatever. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, Muhammad yeah. Gandhi, Muhammad Gandhi, he was very important. Uh, he's a very important philosopher. He said the opposite of hate is not yeah. love. The opposite of love and hate is indifference. I'm indifferent to people who uh, don't like me or don't like my opinion. I don't really care about them. I don't care enough about them to even argue with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, with this Marston person, I don't even argue with that person. You know, I just block them, period. It's done. (laughs) It's just, you know, it it is what it is. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, Um, we can know uh, that is there's no that possibility for us to have the same opinion or, or the same input. It will differ, you know. At some, you know, it will differ. And and if you're smart enough, you you'd understand. Yes, everybody will not agree with you. That will never happen. No matter who you are, no matter how you are loved, that will never happen. The most important thing is for us to be civilized. And try to see things from the other person's perspective. And the reason I have uh, uh, this comment on the screen is that it says, I support Chelsea since 1999 when I was nine years old. It's hard to leave the club. But I have principle. I cannot stand having a, a racist owner. Again, it all comes down to principle. Some people's principle will be to leave, stop supporting Chelsea. Some people's principle will be, okay, find a way to get them out. Again, we deal with things differently. So we can never, we can all never agree. If, for instance, if you see me on Org's channel, Green Tough or, or Global Finance channel, we, we are like brothers, but you, you should see us arguing. But he understands usually that we don't have to argue. And that's why we have a show. We don't have to all agree. That's why we have a show. And that's why, you know, it, it, it takes, you have to, be open to other people's opinion. It, that doesn't mean you accept it, but voice your opinion. If you disagree, just let it be known. So I appreciate that great input from you and Fahim. Uh, there's no that possibility. Yeah, okay, bro, no problem. Uh, if you if you don't have time, I understand, but I appreciate the the, the super chat again. And that means a lot to me. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, okay, this is just something, let me see. Uh, for me, our protest tomorrow should continue to 6th April when we face Real Madrid as well. Because one-time protests and enough. We need uh, to keep a protest and for, 
weeks until they see us. I think they've seen us, but we have to keep talking. If you let the protest subside, that will give them hope. We need to keep pushing until the all the whole ownership thing comes to an end because uh, they're still pushing it, even though they're seeing us uh, protesting against them, pushing back. They still want to buy Chelsea Football Club. So that shows you that we must keep, you know, letting uh, the board, uh, Roman and everybody who even the British government know we don't want these guys. And here, here are reasons why we don't want them. It's important to keep talking until the ownership of Saga process is over. Uh, can we all hope for the best and be positive. Yeah, it is, it's important to be positive uh, and carry on with our campaign. Of course, we have to. We, we must not stop campaigning against the rickets or we'll get into serious uh, trouble. And uh, no, Fahim, uh, if you don't support the team, you are not a fan. Yeah, the, the, by definition, when you stop supporting the team, that means you're not a fan, but you must see things from Fahim's own perspective to understand what he's trying to do. And this is Sasuke Ichiha with a $50 donation monetized. Let's go. Thank you very much, uh, Sasuke. Uh, um, again, I appreciate all your support. Usually you're the first to be here, but today you're not. I know for a reason because we all work because bills don't pay themselves. But believe me, I sincerely do appreciate this. And that is uh, something I will never forget. So thank you again, Sasuke uh, Uchiha. And let me know if I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the donation. Wow, that's uh, that's a huge brother. I must let you know. Uh, uh, maybe time when uh, to protest Viola because it's hard to arrange these protests, uh, arrange these protests, and it's better to do them during uh, the coverage of games like Brentford. So yeah, so that the, it will be caught on television and more people will get to see it. Um, the Ricket says, yeah, we've read that before. Muslims. Uh, our enemy is not racist. Muslims are a race. Uh, listen, <clears throat> yeah. If by definition, most Muslim is not a race. It's a it's a, a religion. It's a belief system. But then again, uh, it's Islamophobia. Let's call it what it is. There is also, but uh, it's surprisingly, I'm not sure why racism is being highlighted even more than the Islamophobia issue. The, the comments that they've made in the past, they've they made Islamophobic uh, comments, they've made the racist comments, they've made the racist comments against Asians, against Blacks, and, and I think there's even more you'd see yourself. There's a lot of uh, bad stuff. It's bad news all over it whenever you talk about them, so. <clears throat> all right, let me see uh, something else here. Uh, Watching live from Belgium. Uh, thank you here, Maurice uh, Sadibe. I hope you've subscribed to the channel. That will do us a word of good. I appreciate that if you can do that. And I'm waiting if we have up to 60 people, then we'll do a giveaway because I promised I wanted us to have up to 100 for us, but I think I've changed that up to 50 people and we'll do a giveaway. Well, Chelsea Images, all fans old and new are always welcome, no matter what, as long as you respect others. That's the Chelsea image. Good. Yeah, exactly. That's important. Whoever leaves Chelsea, if the Ricketts win, they should go. Now, the fact is, I don't see the Ricketts winning. If they win, I'd be surprised. And and uh, uh, we have, I think, I don't think Roman will allow that. And that's, in fact, if he has a say on who becomes a new Chelsea owner. And I don't think Marina will allow that because she communicates with Roman. And I do believe she will be seeing what's going on and the pushback from the fans. Uh Fahim, I didn't say anything like that and support your channel. Yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe somebody's been misread. I think you guys can iron it out because you guys are connected with each other. And uh, again, it's a matter of prin a principle like we've established. Guys, let's not fight. Yes, we shouldn't be fighting. We should stick together. We have work to do. Again, opinion is subjective. So you just have to accept it and let it go and don't mean uh, they are right or wrong. This is just a brilliant comment, and I love it. And I'd like to read it again. Again, opinion is subjective, so you just have to accept it and let it go. You, that doesn't mean it is right or uh, wrong, and that is a civil way to deal with such situations. Uh, and from Maurice, Maurice says, no, to Ricketts family, I totally uh, disagreed with the racist uh, Owen. Again, uh, I, I'm not sure what the racist Owen Pat, what you're talking about? Yeah, it's crazy. It's not like the Muslim religion. It's not 
the biggest in the world, crazy. Uh, um, Blue Morning, uh, I am uh, monitoring you from Liberia. I hope the Ricketts family do not divide us because United will stand. The, mo the motto for Chelsea is always victory, Chelsea all the way. Victory, unity, diversity, if you allow me to add to that, diversity is important. And that's what defines our Chelsea Football Club. And please, wherever you're watching from, if you haven't, make sure to smash that like button so that Google will push the stream to more people and we'll get a chance to do a giveaway if we have up to 60 people in the chat. Uh, again, that's me. I think I've read enough of the comments here. Uh, coming back, uh, coming to you, LSC, uh, I know you're just joining us. How are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad, guys. How are you guys doing? Brilliant. I, I can't complain. As for me, uh, I know uh, I, uh, I can't say for all the guys, but I hope I know they're all doing well, too. Uh, coming to you, um, LSE, your thoughts on, on the sit, uh, sit, situation uh, regarding uh, Stephen Pagluka? Uh, it's really sad, you know. This is all we've been saying. Every single billionaire has got, uh, has got something to hide, you know. Mm -hmm. got something to hide and uh, his own case is pretty hideous, you know. So, yeah, they are knocking themselves out. That's what's happening now. They're knocking themselves out. So at this point, I think we only have a single bid. And even that single bid is tainted, you know. But they are trying to, you know, bring us some form of uh, dirty laundrings of uh, Todd Bodley as well, you know. Yeah, can, can 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 let's let's talk about that of the as as, as Stephen Pagluka. What really happened? Yeah, I think uh, it has to do with uh, his company, Bank Capital. You know some of the practices they've been doing in South Africa. You know, so in, in, involving uh, Jacob Zuma and bribery. You know, I don't have all the details, but. Um, yeah, it has to do with Jacob Zuma, the former uh, president of Africa, you know, and all his corrupt dealings, you know. I, I, I'm sure Jacob Zuma, you know, dealings pretty out there, you know, on the internet. And um, Steve Pagluka was one of those people that we were benefiting. Mm. So yeah, and are you, are you concerned? Are you concerned that that's going to, I mean, it's a, sl a, sli a slippery slope at this point because it just looks like uh, i read a comment from phrase or yeah go ahead yeah at this point in time you know the parties that are being wrong yeah they are running the campaign see this is what's going on okay once you know you know it's like a, you know it's like a shark you know when they see blood you know they want to they get in there. yeah that's what's happening so every single individual in the race you know as long as they are get, you know, getting some body heat from competitors, they are going to bring something out there. And it's up to us to do what we want to do with it. But whatever situation it is, it's still not as you know, uh, dangerous as that of uh, the Ricketts family. You know? So his own case can still be manageable. It's just a question of at least Bain and Bain Capital trying to separate themselves from each other. You know? So yeah. Let's see how it is with it, because uh, I think that's just one more obstacle in his uh, consortium, because we have Atalanta to deal with, you know. I think this is just one more obstacle. Yeah, that's, that's a huge one. The fact that he has 55% uh, shares uh, in, uh, in Atlanta, Atlanta ownership, yeah. uh, I think that's a big issue itself. But here's, I'm going to come uh, ask this question, uh, and I'll come to you, Fahim. Uh, LSC says uh, the Rikas has a bigger problem. From the perspective of the government, do you think that's the case? Because I think the government will see that of the Ricketts as a lesser issue, given that that uh, the issue they had, uh, the, uh, uh, that, that is uh, the, the comment. Okay, I'll come back. I think Fahim has left. I'll, I'll come to you. Um, let me ask you this question. Um, let me ask you this question, LSE. Given the fact that um, the, the, that the case of the, uh, of the Ricketts family, they could argue effectively that the comment uh, that, that is the, the, com the Islamophobia comment wasn't, they weren't the one that made that comment, that he was their father. And, and in the case of, uh, uh, for instance, Pagliko, his company is, is, is accused of being accused of bribery in South Africa, like you've mentioned, I mean, involving Jacob Zuma and all that. 
which do you really think that uh, that uh, uh, the British government will see that of the rickets as a, as a bigger issue than that of, of Pagluka? So, if they are going to talk about, um, I think I think even uh, even Pagluka have a better defense, you know, because. Uh, he can talk about business practices the way you know business culture that would be the right thing to use you can say the business culture in south africa permits any things you know so there are some places if you want to do business with them you have to pass them with gifts it's like a tradition it's normal for them they don't consider it as corruption you know so if you are dealing with such people you know there's a way you can navigate yourself out of that situation but with issue of racism and islamophobia these are social issues, and this is something that can easily unite people, you know. And the reason you are not seeing the issues right now being, you know, uh, uh, you know, blown up in the media is because they want it to go through. They don't want to talk about the Rickett family racism right now. No, they are waiting to use it as the next battery ram to continue to hammer Chelsea on a weekly basis. We are, this protest we are, we, are, we are mounting up tomorrow is basically to stop the shame from coming to Chelsea, the daily weekly interviews, the daily interview press conference. You understand that Thomas Tuko is going to face every single time, okay? So some people say, oh, the father made his, uh, the statements. Okay, fine, the father made the statements, but the father is the one with the money. It's not Tom Ricketts. Tom Ricketts doesn't have the money, all right? It's none of the children. It's the father. Okay, your the dumb is the father will not be involved, right? Let's see. Look at Chicago cops. Every time you see uh, Tom uh, Tom Rickett in press conference, you see the father Joe Rickett in press conference as well. He's running to the pitch, you know, celebrating with the cops fans the same way the, the children are doing. He puts on their regala every single time. So what are you talking about? He's going to be fully involved. That man is going to be the face of Chelsea. He's going to be fully involved. We're going to be seeing them every single day. The four of them or five of them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So there's no, no way. Every single if they, if they allow in, every single time is going to be constant news. Constant news about racism and Islamophobia. He's going to get, he's going to wipe out every single action that Chelsea has taken against these issues over the mm. year. Roma yeah. has let, paid a lot of money, same thing we can, you know? So, so again, again, let me ask you again, which do you think, because I'm really concerned here, the fact I think the government, if they, if they, if, if, if the, the issues, that is, I don't think they'd see things from the Chelsea fans' perspective. It, they could care less. They would see, just vet. Let me, let me say this, yeah, let me say this. If the government, mm. got, was it prosecuted? The question is this, was it prosecuted in South Africa? Does it, it that, that's, that's the thing, it doesn't really matter to them. Was, no, it, can, it, should, it, it should matter, it should matter because now we're talking about the law right now, yeah? What they are saying right now is an accusation, is a mere accusation, okay? So with some PRO machine, you know, that can be wiped out. It's a mere accusation. You don't have the evidence. Or, hmm. or because I'm, 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 here's the thing, LSC. I have to be honest with you. I'm really concerned. I know we all don't want the rickets, and I'm still hopeful it will never yeah. happen because it yeah. will divide our club. But the fact is, the government will never see things from the way we see it. I only hope at those that represent the club at the table in the selection process, which includes Marina, Bruce Buck, who now we see as Judas. Unless, it's, it's, it's going it, to be, unless the government is going to make an irrational escalation decision, all right? Not based on logic, all right? Unless the decision is going to be a knee jerk, all right? I'm, I, you know, I'm not saying that uh, he's the one that I want. I'm just saying it's between him and Rickett, and I have to defend uh, see Fagluka. It's a question of now. Let's start seeing the documents coming out on the internet of him being involved, culpable in some bribery and corruption scandal. Let's see the documentation. In the case of the Ricketts, I didn't think we didn't see anything about uh, you know their SMS messages, their email, whatever. The outrage would have been this, you know, high. You hmm. know, 
But with Steve, we haven't seen anything there. It's been so far is a mere accusation. Okay, so yeah, we have and, to and again, uh, if, if that. yeah, again, I'll come back to you. I just want to go through the chat again because this is an interactive show. Again, I want to uh, say big up to Fahim for finding time to join. He is he's a very very busy person. But once I called upon him to join me on the panel, he did us so immediately. Uh, uh, Michael, nice to see you again, and I'm glad you're wearing a shirt today again. Uh, thank you for uh, doing that. <laughs> I'll come thank back you. to you in the beat. Uh, good, uh, okay. Gracious, my brother. I hope you're doing well. I'll come back to you, but I want to yeah. breeze uh, through the chat again. Uh, uh, Nick says again, pay attention to Nick. We will finish up the rickets tomorrow, I promise you. What Nick means of, with our peaceful protest, it doesn't mean going there or fighting, it's not a war. Finish up, he, he, Nick is referring to here, is the fact that there will be a demonstration to make our voices heard. And if you are in the chat, uh, please let us know if you think the government, if they'll be bothered with that protest, with that pushback against the rickets, that will be important. And I have Mikael here with a super chat of $5.00. Brother, you don't have to do this. You've su supported me enough with your advice and everything. That means the world to me. I don't think, I, I, again, but I appreciate it. I, I, I can't reject it, but it, that means a lot to me. I appreciate all you always supporting the channel. And that's our third our super chat for the day. I am happy and I can't thank you guys enough. Those in the chat, those on the panel, I couldn't have done this without you. And also, I must remember, Star uh, too. Uh, says I uh, respect Nick uh, wonderful at Phantom of Many Topics and, and just we all, okay let me read this uh, uh, the Rick had uh, built electronic billboard at the end of one section of uh, Wrigley Field to stop the people who lived across from the stadium from seeing in uh, during games that showed uh, <laughs> again there's again. a lot of stuff uh, again there's a whole lot of stuff not just that uh, let me see and this is um uh, Gabriel Kobina SM from Ghana. Gabriel, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you here. Um, this thing is taking too far for us, the fans. Yeah, it's taking too long. And, and again, it's not simple. I've lost some weight, actually, because it's really affecting me more than you know. But I have to keep, uh, I have to keep uh, running on the channel so that I give people voice to contribute. Phantom, I see you're back. You must have something to say, but I'll start with Michael. Uh, Michael, your thoughts? Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you. Blue morning to you. Nice to see you. And you guys too. Okay. Um, it's about uh, Ricketts, Ricketts family, you know? Okay. Um, uh -huh, I think uh, that, that might just need a, a chance, you know? Why do you that. say that? Um, uh, I think he has learned this lesson, you know, mm. people have already, um, context about him. People have already attacked him in so many ways, in different ways because of the okay. racism. Okay. So, so what I'm saying now, that man may do well in Chelsea. He may change things in Chelsea. He have learned his lesson. I think he needs a little chance. Okay. Uh, uh, where are you from? Yeah. I'm from Nigeria. From Nigeria? You, uh, what, what part? I'm Michael um, Onyeka by name. Okay. I, so you do but speak I reside, Igbo. Yes. I, will, I will say something in Igbo. Because I grew up in Nigeria okay. before I moved to the United States. And then I will make those in the chart to understand what I say. There's something that Igbo say, Adamo, Imake Benanka. <laughs> Thank you. And the meaning of what I just okay. said to him okay. is this. Is this. I, I understand. Yeah. You've been a left-handed all your life. Yeah. And you can't just mm -hmm. start being a right-handed person after the age, as at a certain age in your life, you will remain left-handed forever. Even if people try to get you to become right-handed, mm -hmm. you can only try it a bit, but you always switch to your favorite hand, which means I don't think it's even possible for them to change. This is something that you could argue that it runs in their family. And that's my own opinion. 
do you understand now? And I, I knew from your accent, I, I knew immediately that you were evil. So I had to use that ad date to explain it to you how difficult it would be to get them to change. Yes, there's a possibility that if they emerge the new owners of Chelsea Football Club, they'd never do such again. But you never can tell. You don't risk it when there yeah. are lots of evidence. And, and it is not just one thing. We go from Islamophobia to racism to the way they treat their, their employees at their current club. Uh, they cut their sal salaries. They, they sell the best players at the club. And then to save money, again, this is what I heard, but again, this one I'm not sure, but still it sounds like what they do. To, to make money, they had to abandon and uh, that is an access, access, access for the same people, people to the stadium. 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 That's, That's how, how bad, bad this whole thing is. And, and remember, I'm getting feedback, please. So you can mute if you're not talking. Again, we've established that this it's going to be bad PR for the club. And some sponsors wouldn't want to come close to Chelsea Football Club. So this is something serious. Yeah. It is something serious. And I think they're playing, uh, if you ask me, I'd say they're playing dirty now. They, they they arranged a meeting with Bruce Buck. Uh, that behavior I just can't I just can't get over it. He he's a lawyer and should know better why he took over. The, you know he was he, he why he accepted to be the one to facilitate the meeting. And I'm even learning that he was part of the meeting. Now they're playing dirty. Now the, you have heard, I'm hearing they're buying ads on or some newspapers to say yeah, Bolly did this, Bolly did, that, and the other person did that. They're digging up dirt on each other. And they had they, 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 that is, they, they facilitated a meeting with, uh, what's his name again, uh, Calaviol, uh, for Paul Calaviol. He said something, and then they made sure it was tweeted, twisted uh, in, in the media. You understand? So I, I, I'm glad and I'm happy that you're evil. So I had to use that ad date to make you know you have to <laughs> look at it uh, thoroughly. It will be a huge mistake. It will divide the fan base. And some uh, people in, in, in the world will not look. That is, they wouldn't come close to Chelsea again because it will be out there. And it's been out there. Yeah, so thank yeah. you very much. And I, and I appreciate it. Believe me, I respect your opinion. And that gave me the opportunity to, to explain something to some people who would think otherwise. But I, I, again, you, you're always welcome to jump on and, and express yourself. Uh, uh, Pierre, coming to you before I go to Phantom, because my friend Phantom, he's been here before. Pierre, the, the question uh, for you is, uh, I hope, by the way, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Brilliant. That's good to hear. What do you think about what, to, or, or let me say, let me, can you talk about uh, the situation, what we're hearing uh, regarding uh, Stephen Pagliuca? Yeah, I was, um, I mean, I heard what LSG said about it. Um, uh, I'm, I think the word government accusations or something like that is a bit, a bit strong. There's no conspiracy or so from the government in any way mm. on this. Mm. Um, you've, you've, got, you've got to split the, um, the two houses here. Um, you're sort of saying what someone's after. This is a Chelsea fan who's, who's speaking out here. So uh, it's, it's Lord Hayne who's in the House of Lords. And he's speaking out as a Chelsea fan concerned about the club. Um, been loaded with debt, etc. He, you know, he even made a comparison with the Glaziers at Manchester mm -hmm. United. And with with, with regard to accusations, he's not making an accusation. This is, uh, the, you know, the, the actual ju uh, judicial commission for South Africa has already found Bain and Company guilty for this unlawful act. So he's just mentioning that. So to say that someone from the British government is making an accusation. If someone, if 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 a company that Pagluka is involved with has actually been found guilty by the actual South African Commission for acting unlawfully, mm -hmm. um, he's got every right to say that he's concerned about that particular person's fitness for, of managing a club that he supports or being the owner of the club that he supports. So I'm just basically pointing that out um, with the Daily Mail and. Uh, Todd Bowley, they're not the only people recovering. I haven't seen any 
mention that the Ricketts have actually come up with this story. This is just what newspapers do. They they go around looking for skeletons in the cl cupboard and yeah. And, and if I can come in one second, when I read that, I say that is just not the part that I care about is what is being talked about and not who's sponsoring it. But I, I again, I say, it, is this is it possible that they could be sponsoring? Very possible. But then again, you make a great point here. This is what newspapers do. Go ahead, Pierre. Sorry. Yeah. So um, yeah. You know, again, other, sorry, not Pierre. Yeah, so, um, the first staff uh, uh, sues me. Yeah. So on the, on the Todd Bowley side, he uh, he has shares in a um, a betting company which uh, which is in Russia. So um, I'm not sure it's the biggest holding um, that he's got, but uh, mm -hmm. 120 million betting stake in Russia is what he's got. Um, wow. So. I get the impression that they're not able to operate currently, or that. Um, but as I say, the stories are coming in. Todd Bowley, well, look at him; he's got a stake in a betting company in 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 Russia. Um, obviously, Pagluka, you've got the uh, Lord Hain, who, as I said, he's been a Chelsea fan for fifty-seven years, pointing mm. out that he, a company that he that he's chairman. Has has been found guilty, or the company has been found guilty, rather than himself, um, mm. for this eight million uh, pounds uh, corruption type thing with uh, with President Zuma. So you know, the, so and of, and if you go to Broughton, Broughton's been highlighted for something back in the days when he was looking after the British American Tobacco Company. So uh, and you know, and this is because he was the chairperson. Um, where, uh, in Burma when um, there was the possibility of money going over to the military. I mean, there was a campaign back back in 2003 to, um, for his company that he was the chairman to pull out. So, you know, to, you know he's done quite a lot since, since then. He's been the chairperson, chairman at uh, Liverpool Football Club after that particular instance. And, and obviously what, what, what his participation back in 2003 wasn't a concern when he took over as chairman at Liverpool Football Club. So if people are starting to dig out and saying this could possibly put a stop to, yeah, to, stop to his campaign, uh, as I say, I think this is just what the media do. They they sort of said, oh, look, Mar Martin Broughton, he's not completely clean either. Todd Bowley's got some some shares in a betting company uh, in uh, Russia. And uh, and then and obviously we got Lord Hain talking about uh, Todd, uh, about the Pagluka side. Um, and then I could turn around and say, well, what about Rishi Sunak's wife? And, you know, uh, we can all play that game. Yeah, I think uh, that's why I always like to have you on the panel. Honestly, I am happy, you know, to get your opinion on that. And, and, but let me let me ask you this uh, um, before I go to Phantom. Phantom, please, I, I know you still have time. Just give me a minute, please. I'll come to you, brother. Uh, um, Pierre, now, it, it has become a conundrum, no question. It has become messy to, to a certain measure, if you ask me if I'm allowed to phrase it like that. Are you concerned that that could cause a lot of issue and that we may, may end up not having a, a, it, it, it's somebody in the group who the government will see as clean enough to, you know, to be accepted as a new owners of Chelsea Football Club? And if that happens, what do you think will happen? Well, I don't think I, I, I don't think any of the stories so far um, are plausible. Well, yeah, if, if people turn around and say none of the four business in the shortlist are, are feasible. I don't think that's the case. So, as I said, Sir Martin Broughton's group, his former association with a company where he, you know, I mean, he's, he's been chair, chairman at British Airways, British American Tobacco. Uh, you know, he's obviously been chairman at Liverpool Football Club. He, he's a, he's a mm -hmm. businessman. Uh, and in the process of businessmen, especially successful businessmen, there's always going to be some firm or company that he's been involved in that may have been trading in a country which obviously incidents happened obviously you know into the, the military in Burma and they were urged to pull out uh, I don't see that having any input on his uh, his bid I don't see any impact on Todd Bowley's um, you know because of you know the simple way for him is to is just to disassociate himself with the better betting company that he's got shares with in Russia if he, if he needs to um Pagluka, maybe there's a bit more concern because obviously um, it's it's certainly brought to his attention that he has been uh, 
you know, he is chairman of, of the Bain Company, which has been found mm-hmm. guilty in South Africa. So that may have an implication. But uh, again, South Africa is not in the same category as Russia with the war in Ukraine. So it's it's a Chelsea fan who's expressing that he particularly wouldn't want this person running his club that he supports. Um, and, you know, OK, he's urging ministers to to do something about it. But, you know, I, I don't ex- expect that they're actually going to physically do anything or or, or um, insist that he's pulled out of the race. But who knows? Um, and I still don't think Ricketts will get it. Yeah, I still don't think I'm so hopeful, uh, though my hopes were dashed to a certain measure, uh, given our uh, Bruce Box behavior. Uh, I just can't, uh, the, I just can't trust the process. But I'm so hopeful. Phantom, I'll come to you. Let me just breeze uh, through the comments, uh, please, if you don't mind. I hope you still have time, brother. Or do you want to come in? Are you in a hurry? I can wait. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, this is Michael John. He says, "Thank you, brother, for uh, the job I'm watching from Spain. Nice to see you, brother, here. And if you haven't, please make sure to uh, click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And wherever you're watching from, if you can join us on uh, on uh, on YouTube, we will do a giveaway. I think I must do that because it's a promise. Uh, even if we don't have up to 50 people in the chat." I want to say that's my way of saying thank you to our followers, to everybody on the panel who supported the channel. I couldn't have done it all alone. Uh, We would do a $50 giveaway. Uh, So if you want to participate, you have to be on YouTube. And please make sure to like the video so that Google will push it to more people. Share it with anybody you know. Tell them about the channel if you enjoy the Blue Morning Show. And Mikhail says, uh, spot on. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Bigger facts, Coachella. Thank you, Nick Blue. And thank you for all that you do for Chelsea Football Club. And, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. And I always give you the panel to, you know, voice your opinion. I, I heard the Saudi group have come in again. I, I don't think that is true. I think they're done. Uh, I don't think uh, they're back. Uh, note to the Rickets. Yes, yes, yes. Please note to the Rickets. Hit the like button, says Tobago, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That is very important and uh, there's something I, I saw from a rival fan I think one of the mods deleted it I will make it show and I will address it hit the like button people and subscribe to the channel and Nick uh, please do we need uh, them I'm not sure what he's saying here maybe Hannah is a level uh, okay he's a level MP a member of the opposition and not the government okay thank you for that uh, from staff uh, hello staff uh, big up Nick Blue and uh, big up Tobago. And yes, I want to read this uh, because uh, just uh, to your face, I want to show the message. Yes, it's showing. Uh, uh, it doesn't, he says, uh, racist Chelsea FC in the mod. Uh, I hope, I wish I knew your real name. Best two weeks of your life. Chelsea is done. Okay, we'll see. Uh, 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 this will be part of the video. We'll see what happens. Arsenal will still remain a relegation team. And we will bounce back even better. And don't be surprised, we're going to win the Champions League uh, this year. So, yeah, I'd say I will never block you for that. I w- I'm going to read it because it will never be as you thought. We're not in the mud. We're just going through a patch of a bad period that we will overcome eventually. Um, uh, this is uh, Nick and staff saying hi to each other. Arsenal fan again and tired of them. Uh, though I, uh, I still... Yeah, yeah, we know that, uh, but we're trying to avoid uh, our politics. You, the queen herself, should know that. Um, let me see if there's anything else to address here. Uh, do we have to wait a bit? Okay, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, come back. If I see something, I will highlight it. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, 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 go ahead, Phantom. Oh, uh, just a question. Which uh, screen name is Stav? Because... Uh... I don't see his screen name. Maybe he's Tarius Mar- Madison. Huh? This one. Oh, Martha? That's that's that Slav? That's Slav, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, then I have blocked that person. Then I didn't know that Marsden is Stav. I would have blocked him a long time ago. Then, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Fanto. I, I I was just saying to people, oh, don't blame Stav. I haven't blocked him, but. Uh, so if Marsden and Slav, Slav are the same person, yeah, he, he's the only person I've ever blocked on this channel entirely. So, yeah. Okay, that's All right. fine. Go ahead. Now mm-hmm. I know. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that, that got sidetracked. Uh, as far as the Ricketts are concerned, okay, I, I don't want to say this in a way that's going to make people explode, but 
if you don't threaten to completely leave Chelsea, then they're not going to take your threat seriously because they're going to say, oh, you're just going to be like Manchester United fans or, you know, like Arsenal fans. They cry about their ownership, but at the end of the day, they're still going to the games. They're still buying the merchandise. They're still watching them on TV. You know, so what's the difference between a fan who is complaining about Ricketts and the fan who loves the Ricketts? Nothing if you're still going to do all this supporting thing financially because, as far as billionaires are concerned, it's where money is concerned. Like, for example, if the um, if the Ricketts buy this team, I will never buy another Chelsea shirt again. I'll probably get rid. Well, I'm not going to get rid of Paramount Plus because I watch Star Trek. But you know, I mean, but there are certain other things I'm never going to throw a single dollar towards Chelsea again. As far as my friends who have Chelsea channels, I'll come on and probably wear a Fulham shirt or Barcelona or whatever team I decide to go to next. But I'm definitely not going to support Chelsea because that would contribute financially to um, the uh, the team that is, um, you know, going. If you if you spend a dollar towards Chelsea, then yes, it's going to go towards Ricket. So, okay, let me ask you this question, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Phantom. Now, that's your stance. That's how you deal with it if it happens. Do you have any problem with anybody saying, uh, well, I'm still going to continue to support my club? No, uh, because uh, I wasn't even going to abandon, because I'm always truthful, okay? I wasn't going to abandon the rickets when they say I'm Islamophobic because I'm not Islam. I'm not a part of Islam. But when they attack the Chinese, now I have to. Now, now, no self-respecting person. There's an American politician that still supported Trump after he insulted his uh, wife and insulted uh, that person's um, Yeah, wife. I know, I know who you're talking or, about. Just, just don't call no, names no, so we don't what I'm go into politics. Is, mm-hmm. I, 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 the, there's no way I can self-respect myself if, I, if, if they insult me and then I continue to support them. Then that just makes me a collaborator. You know? No, I'm just saying, I understand your point in terms yeah. of uh, the, the reason you'd leave, you'd stop supporting Chelsea, but that you 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 don't condemn anybody that says, okay, I'm not going to leave. I, I will keep supporting my club because my club comes first than the owner. You don't have any issue with that, right? No, because, uh, I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, are, you know, people call me a plastic fan, but I'm only a plastic fan because I've supported the Dallas Cowboys since 1977, but, you know, I'm 50 years old, probably older than everybody else except Stav, Stav right? Everybody else is going to be younger than me here. So uh, I'm 50 years old and I've supported one team, you know, since I was five years old. And look at what it's gotten me for the past 25 years. We haven't even sniffed a Super Bowl. So, you yeah, know, I, <laughs> forgive me if I'm a trophy hunter, I'm but sorry. I've been thirsty for a while. I, I, I'm so sorry. I hope that changes for you, but I, I guess I get your point. And let's see, I'm going to come to you in a bit. Um, here's the thing. Uh, um, my Ghanaian brother, uh, uh, ACN, how is the health condition of Roman Abramovich? I think you have an answer here from our uh, staff saying Roman has fully recovered. I hope that makes you happy. Uh, let me see. Uh, sorry, Kachila, I couldn't help that political comment. Yeah, I understand. No, you don't have to say sorry. It happens because there's, uh, these days you can't talk about football, sports without even uh, politics coming into play. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I'll come to you in a bit, LSE, but let's just breeze uh, through the comment. And poor Arsenal fans always, yeah, exactly. That's why I had to show that comment. We had to. It's okay. I have, uh, okay, block to you. <laughs> Tell me if you find, find you so entertaining. Okay, good for you guys. It's not about the Ricketts money. It's how they treat people. Exactly. It's just more than that. It's just more than that, how they treat people. All the issues that we've talked about here on the show, but we're not going to... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to show this because I like it. Um, yeah, yeah, mm, good for me. Uh, uh, Coach, can you uh, throw out Phantom? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I will not do that. That's not good. Uh, it, not even good to say. Uh, uh, the, the fact that he's the, the, what he said he's going to leave Chelsea if that happens, it's no, that, that's not okay. I want Arsenal to lose the next uh, few games and end up in the conference uh, league. Um, yeah, you never know. That could happen. Arsenal fans should mind their business. This is Chelsea we're talking about here and not Arsenal. And this is blue morning, not red morning. Please, Arsenal fans, uh, take note. Yes, they should take note. 
I had to show the comment not because it came with a super chat, but because I know we shall overcome. And and, and I think it it just uh, I, I probably uh, cut out a snippet of this video. Ask them you remember when you were making fun of us because Chelsea is it, you know will always uh, you know be a top club no matter what happens. And if we come out of this, be rest assured that the club will be structured in a manner that will such will not befall us again in the future. Uh, Aviola will be happy. And as, as staff says, if I spend a pound, it's paying the players, not fans. No, again, yeah, exactly. That's how staff sees it. We all see things uh, differently. Uh, bless up, Kashil and Pano. Uh, blue morning to you, or uh, noon, whatever time it is where you are. Nice to always see you here. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so as long as our phantom demographic isn't targeted, he's okay with all the demographics being targeted. Yeah, Phantom, you have to address that because that's really how your comment sounded. Uh, yes, because the, there are uh, a thousand different injustices in the world, and um, I only get in a fight if they're insulting me. I mean, it's um, if they're not insulting me, then it's not my fight. It's almost like it's impolite. I feel, uh, again, without uh, getting into politics, I feel that some countries get into other countries' business when they don't have any stake in it themselves because they think that the world's policeman. I'm not the world's policeman. So as long as you're not throwing punches at me, then if you're throwing punches at somebody else, then somebody else has to take up that fight. You know, again, hmm. this is a different viewpoint because if you're not throwing punches at me, I'm a neutral country. As soon as you throw a punch at me, now you're my enemy. I, I think, yes, well, you're my brother, but I have to be honest with you. Here's how we have an issue with that principle you just discussed. Um, you're a veteran, right? Uh, I, I'm not the I'm not the noisemaker. Whoever's making that noise in the background. No, no, I've muted the person. I think it was Michael. Oh, okay. Or Gabriel, you you're you're a veteran, right? I am a veteran, yes. And I, I'm surprised at what because the last thing you just said is uh, I think oh, that's no, not no. something. When I signed on to the military, um, basically, um, I'm I'm a hired employee. I mean, they tell me to go kill. Um, whatever people I, I do that because I'm I'm like a you know I'm like a bodyguard or whatever so you know I just obey whatever the master tells me to do but as soon as I stop the, the military isn't paying me anymore so I'm not gonna go after you know I'm not gonna go after somebody before when I was a bodyguard when I quote unquote was in the military I'm an employee of the government and I'm doing their bidding I'm like a hired mercenary yeah because uh, the fact is I had to ask you because that last uh, comment uh, whether it's a uh, principle or not I think it doesn't align uh, with the fact that you were that you're a veteran because as a veteran uh, you follow orders I, I know that quite well but that's by the way so we don't go down that path but I get your point uh, um. Let's see here. Uh, it's taken time for us to win a league on the uh, Kronke, but we might win a league in a couple of years. I might It might take years to win us something, but Chelsea fans need to be patient with the Ricketts. He's trolling, and it will never be Ricketts. And I remember a good thing you're not even disguising yourself, but, uh, well, you're not uh, – I am i don't know what to say again – uh, uh, Chelsea Football Club founded 1905, not 2022. Uh, good comment there. So why is it bad at the way they treat people? You answer that question yourself. Uh, let me see if there's anything here. What uh, dressing? Uh, coming to you, uh, LSE, your thoughts? On what, uh, what issue? Uh, uh, regarding uh, people uh, deciding to leave or stay, uh, okay, support, okay. support, yeah, if the Ricketts take over, of which we do okay. believe, strongly believe that that's not going to happen. Even though yeah. we have reasons now, we have more than enough reasons to doubt uh, 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 the process. We all have our reasons and motivations for supporting uh, whatever club. You know, like me, when I started supporting Chelsea, you know, after the FA Cup and the uh, European Cup with beat Stuttgart with Zola's goal, you know. After that, they, they were calling me, uh, what was it, Glory Hunter, right? That was mm. that 97. They were calling me Glory Hunter. You see what I'm saying? Even though I had, uh, what was this guy, Babayaro in there and all of that. So people can say whatever they want, you know. But the love will never go away, you know. Because I saw that team at that time to be 
you know, the upcoming of Chelsea that, okay, this team can actually compete for the league. And then in, I think it was 2000 or so, and we're having got Justin, we're having a, a hustle bank, you know, banging in goals, you know. So people can say whatever they want, you know. I don't see anyone leaving Chelsea, you know. But it's going to, I would say the motivation will, you know, will be minimized to a certain extent because I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be, you know, doing, a, you know, shopping for merchandise if that's, you know, uh, turns out to be the case, you know. So I want to make some clarifications to what Pierre said earlier on. It was in mm. response to the question that you asked, that uh, Koshila asked, which was mm. between the Ricket and the, and the Steve Pagluka, which one do you think the government will have more problem with, you know? So at that time, I was, I was talking about them being, what happened was Lord Hain made an accusation, all right, in parliament on what should happen, all right? The accusation is based on what has happened in South Africa, all right? I was not supporting uh, Pagluka in any way or condone whatever that has happened in there. I'm just saying, if I was to defend this position, all right, what would be the case? What has happened in South Africa was an indictment and it's been referred for prosecution, Bain and Capital. I'm mean, no, sorry, Bain and Company, Bain and Company. That's a different company now from Bain Capital that Steve Pagluka manages, okay? So there's a leeway. Even the article, the Daily Mail article that, you know, that came up with all this, all right? They even put that in there, although it was buried somewhere in there, you know, that there's some sort of loophole for him to walk through, you know? So that's one issue, all right? Lord Hain, yeah, he's a Chelsea fan. He lives at Chelsea. I even made an attempt to call that number, to call his um, to call his office and all of that. When this sanctions stuff started, yeah, at the very beginning. All right. Why did this man not stand up if he lost Chelsea so much? Why did he not stand up to challenge Chris Bryant in there? I didn't see any input from him. I didn't see him fighting. I heard Michael Gove is also a Chelsea fan. I didn't see any of them fighting, standing up for Chelsea Football Club. So now he's all of all of a sudden consigned, and we should take him seriously because he's, he's been Chelsea fan for years. Come on, let's stop with this nar narrative, man. Then again, another issue was uh, uh, Sir Martin Broughton issue, which was you know pretty pretty terrible. But Pierre tried to you know navigate a way to say it's not that terrible and all of that, you know. But the situation is pretty obvious, and it's it's been out there for a long time. What the British um. Uh, American Tobacco Company B to the Burmese in Miami. All right, what's it called? The 8888 uprising. It's out there. People know about these things. So it's not something that I think that is even more dangerous than what Romans ever done. You see? So we have this is the time now. Everything is coming out. This is the time to put the searchlight on every single party involved. Okay. So Lord Hain, while well, I appreciate his concern. For raising this issue, but I have zero respect for him whatsoever because he did not stand up for Chelsea when it mattered, when it counted. Yeah, I did not hear him negotiate to say, well, how, how dare you, you know, propose 20,000 pounds for Chelsea away game? Why don't you increase it? I didn't see any input from him. He's not challenging the cultural uh, uh, minister, he's not doing anything. You know, so. You know, he doesn't deserve any credit or flower from me. No way. That's not, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'll come to you uh, in a Come back to you in a bit. Uh, Pierre, I'll come to you because uh, just reminded me, uh, LSC just reminded me a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, clearly, uh, we, I, I started by saying, uh, you know, highlighting the fact that the Rickets could argue that the comments, the Islamophobia comments were made by their father and not them directly, but then uh, you and I know we have all the issues uh, made by, by their brothers and them, their siblings, and that. No, no, the, the Chinese comment was by the uh, by the son, not by the father. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, remember, I first when I talked about the uh, fa the father, I said you and I know that the comments made by by the children. Uh, some each of them have one problem or the other. But then again, the case of uh, Pagluka has to do with. Uh, Something they say bribery in South Africa and all that, and, and, and some of the stuff they talked about. 
So my question is, which of them, from the perspective of the government, do you think they would take more seriously? Because I'm concerned to the government, the, the issues we, the Chelsea fans have with the Ricketts family will not be much of an issue for them. They'd be more concerned, something more political from the perspective of, uh, uh, that's looking at things of, uh, from the perspective of uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Pabluka. Your thoughts are up here. Um, well, the no to Ricketts protest is going to have some, to have some effect. I mean, at, at the moment, yes, they're in the shortlist, but there are protests against them. That uh, And forget about the government here. Let us, let's talk about the EPL and the fact that they've got to look at the suitability of the owner. I think they're going to take more notice than that. And they don't take take notice on, on anything in the past, as I say, you know, Sir Martin Broughton has actually been a chairman at Liverpool Football Club. So referring to what happened in Burma, etc., you know, as far as I'm concerned, that they're digging up something back in 2003 and it wasn't an issue in 2010. So, um, they, you know, that obviously if they raised it up again, yes, he was, you know, chairman of this particular one. Um, I'm still got issues about. LSG hopping round in the Parliament, to be honest, because, you know, you mentioned Michael Gove, you mentioned MPs, you mentioned House of Commons and House of Lords are two different areas. And, and this debate, you know, I, I can see you've been digging round and yes, you know, I, I can see the arguments. And that was the Conservative Lords people who argued on the, on, on behalf of Stephen Pagluca. But when you start jumping around about the government, the House of Lords don't make the rules. So, you know, when you sort of say, I didn't hear Hain talk about this, he's not part of the House of Commons. He's not an elected MP. He's a Lord sitting in the House of Lords. He's done his service in government. So, you know, he was talking in one one house and the House of Commons is something completely different. The House of Commons was the one that, uh, uh, that enforced the sanctions. So, uh, you know, sort of hopping round. As I said, I didn't take this... I'm not taking any of this seriously if, 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 you know, one person making an accusation and people defending him on the other side, that's, that's just what happens. The point is it's made the papers. So does it actually affect Pagluka? I don't know. But if you think, let me, let's say, let's say if in fact it is true, which of them do you think, do you think, which of the cases would, do you think the government would take more seriously because from if you ask me, I'd say I think they take that of Pagluka more so seriously than well, that of the well, Ricketts. Yeah, at, at, the, at the moment, there's no movement in anything in the it, it, you know the actual government itself. There's no move to actually interfere with the process, and there's no suggestion that they're going to rule him out of the race. As I say, it is it is a Chelsea supporter who happens to be a lord uh, sitting on the Labour side, not the Conservative side, who, who made an opinion about unsuitability. How seriously is that going to be taken? Uh, it may, you know, the only thing is it, it's now out there, but uh, and it's made the newspapers. But does I'm not seeing, uh, you know, Stephen Pavluka actually pulling out of this particular piece. Oh, this story's come out. Uh, you know, because because the, there is this thing about Bain Company and this, you know, and the fact that they are they are running independently. There's all sorts of things. So um, between Bain Capital and Bain Company. Um, so I, I can appreciate on that side. But this is this, this is the viewpoint of a of a particular Lord and he's made it known and it's made the news. So that's on that side. Hmm. Uh, uh, thank you very much. That's why I always like to have you on the panel. And uh, is someone in the kitchen? Uh, not really kitchen. It was Michael who was uh, at work, and I think he's left. Uh, he didn't mute his mic then. Uh, somebody, uh, okay, I get that. I know where that's coming from, and I understand this comment. We don't have any blacks in India, but that doesn't mean I condone racism towards them somewhere else in the world. And uh, please don't uh, take offense at my use of the word no I, I don't i get your point and i hope phantom understands your point too and i know that was uh that's in reference to what he said about until you punch no, him I, so I, I need to explain to everyone okay it's not mm -hmm. because i'm an mm -hmm. caring person but because i already have enough enemies and enough fights as it is to get into other people's fights so mm -hmm. i mean literally i in the offline world, I have people coming at me all the time. So I only have time to defend me. <laughs> okay. So if you two are fighting on the side, if Will Smith 
is uh, being insulted by Chris Chris Rock or whatever. I'm not jumping into that. So you know, if you, if if Muslims are being insulted, then it's Muslims who are you know who need to protect each other. But you know, if you insult a Chinese, then then I'm involved. So I'm sorry that. You know, if, if people don't like that stance, but as no, far as listen, military, listen, you I'm have right every we all, we all yeah. have policies that define us, uh, that, and that's you, mm -hmm. and that doesn't uh, believe me. I see it uh, the way I see it, that doesn't make you a bad person, but for me, the way I operate, I'd never sit back and watch you, you know, insult a Muslim mm -hmm. or beat a Muslim because they're Muslim. No, even though I'm Christian, and, and it's mm -hmm. not because I grew up in northern Nigeria where you have. Muslims, Christians, everybody living together. And I've, I've been to mosques myself, I must tell you. You understand? I will never mm -hmm. see you also maltreat a white person and not say something because I'm black. No, that's who I am. Again, like I said, we all have policies that define us. That's who you are. And that doesn't make us enemies. You're still my friend. You're still my brother. Right. But no, I, my attitude is more like I'm Switzerland. If you're not involving Switzerland, then Switzerland is not involved. <laughs> Again, that's you. That, that's you. That, and that's not, I don't have a problem with that. You have policies that define it. I'm fine with it. Uh, too much uh, politics. Yes. Uh, Coachella, should we remove? No, don't do that, please. Uh, don't worry. I think it's not that bad. He's just trolling. And, and he gives us more watch time. And that's that's OK. If he becomes so too insulting or personal, then you could. But right now he's just bantering and bantering in football is allowed. Uh, I just don't worry about it. Uh, Aviola only removed for disruption, not opinion. Exactly. That's that's a good one there. Remove for disruption and not opinion. Opinions are allowed, and that's why we're people. We're humans, after all. Big up, everyone. And big up to you, Ainkit, uh, a friend who has, over time, become a brother, my brother from another mother. Uh, good. Always good to see you here. Please, if you haven't, go check out his channel. Believe me, you will love the content. Uh, Sasuke is saying, in front of many topics, imagine supporting Jets. Oh, you guys have a problem to solve there. Uh, <laughs> play in New Jersey. New York just playing New Jersey. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> now, some of our players are seeking for transfers because of what is happening to the team. I don't think that's the case, really. But you could argue that. Uh, but you, there's no way. I think some of them even, I think they have the hopes, like us, that uh, the Ricketts will never get the chance to, or, you know, become new Chelsea owners. But then again, there are reasons to be uh, concerned. Uh, let me see here if I, we have anything else to address here. If not, we'll go ahead with the discussion. Uh, we are one family, one love, guys. Exactly. Good one. No Chelsea fan stood up for Romana when the sanctions were made. I think I'd like us to talk about this because uh, the sanction, that is even if you stood up for Roman, it would not have made a difference. It would actually end up making the whole situation worse. Uh, no to racism to see that. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for that input there. That's good. In general, I have no problem with Arsenal at all. Okay, that's you. Again, I can see why Arsenal fans hate the Ricketts too. They have every reason to hate them. I think the Chelsea fans are overreacting. Ricketts in the long run will be good on us. Okay, good to see. You. Thank you. That's your own input. Uh, let's see. I am hiding them the moment they come in. Viola is just uh, not happy again. Um, I want us to talk about this, and I'll start with you, uh, LSG. Uh, no Chelsea fans stood up for Roman when the sanctions were made. Would that have made any uh, any difference? I, I don't think so, if, if you ask me my opinion. Your thoughts, LSG? Yeah, it could have started, um, it could have started from the parliament, you know. It could have started from there. You know, the powers that be could have started from there. You know, anyone in there that have any sort of affinity, affiliation with Chelsea Football Club, they should have, you know, spoken up at that particular time when a different Can I party come in one second? was piling up the pressure. LSG, well, you're talking about those that support Chelsea that, are, uh, that is uh, in the parliament. Was that what you said? Yeah, yeah. That would Those be serious. That would be considered serious conflicts of interest, if you it ask. It would not me. be considered serious conflict of interest whatsoever. Because why? Why because do you think person, that? Because the people raising the motion, the people raising the motion, for example, Chris Bryant, yeah, is a Liverpool fan. All right, it's a Liverpool fan. So it mm. will not become a debate. 
You see, that place in there, like I keep saying, what they are doing there is rap battle, yeah? Your team versus my team. You say it, yeah, I say it back. You clap back at me, I clap back at you. That's how the game is played, all right? And to what Pierre said earlier on, I don't know the difference between the both houses, all right? And all I'm saying is this. The same platform that Lord Hain is using now to speak out, he should have used that same platform to speak up at the very beginning. It would have made a bloody difference because these people, they work based on connection and relationship among themselves, okay? So one party is pushing back, and you know I, that pe Chris Brown, he, celebra he celebrates Liverpool's victory. We know this, okay? Hmm. And his reason is he's bringing up an issue against Chelsea when we have a Carabao final against his own, his, his own team. That should be the bridge of, you know, of interest in there, okay? A Chelsea fan should have called him out to say, why are you doing this? Are you trying to ruin the integrity of the game? Do you want, are you doing this because of your team? This is where the game begins, okay? They were all set in there to represent our interests. And that Lord here in there is supposed to represent that particular locality. Why did he not stand up for the businesses that benefit from Chelsea Football Club? The businesses mm. that are suffering right now as a result of that sanctions. Why did Lord Hain not stand up for them, irrespective of which house he belongs to? Is it? Yeah. Mm. So let's call it spade a spade, okay? So as far as these people are concerned, I can hop around anywhere and call out their hypocrisy. However, I didn't fit. Okay, because this is a very, very serious situation. All right, and we have to fight back accordingly. All right, a uh, good comment right there. And if you want to participate in, in, in a giveaway, here's what, uh, and wherever you are, if you're watching on Facebook or Twitter, you can join us, <clears throat> excuse me, on YouTube to be part of the $50 giveaway because we're celebrating 1k subscribers and also monetization of the channel that's a way to thank our supporters here's what you type if you want to be part of it it is london is blue each word in capital letter uh london with capital l uh, uh i at the east starts with a capital i and blue starts with capital b london is blue is what you type if you want to be part of the giveaway and i want us to complete that before we continue but i'm going to come to you uh pierre your thoughts on on uh, what LSE just uh, talked about? Do you think uh, demonstrating against uh, 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 you know sanctions against Roman would have made any difference? Uh, we're not going to go back to the government at all. But uh, I think uh, when the news broke out, uh, um, there was a lot of shock. To be honest, mm -hmm. you know, I, it came it came following the Wednesday Thursday. The sanctions were applied, uh, and I think too many Chelsea fans were in shock about the implications. To um, you know, what are you going to do? Stand outside the Houses of Parliament. The I think people were grateful that there was a, an operating license to continue, um, mm -hmm. because that was the main thing. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I mean it. It would have been frowned upon about Chelsea fans suddenly turning up but then i suppose that's the nature of pro protests anyway but uh but as far as i can see um you know roman abramovich's name was still sung at the actual grounds and and even that act was has been frowned upon so uh um i don't actually know what you know the sanctions wouldn't have been reversed if the chelsea fans had, had protested you know it, it, the, the sanctions have been applied they wouldn't be reversed yeah, I think I think you I think you and I the same. I still feel it wouldn't have made a difference. But again, I get uh, I understand LSD's opinion. I uh, just quickly I'll come I'll come back to you as a phantom. Let me just read the comments here. Uh, it, uh, you have to rewrite it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Foster uh, Tamani. You have you're missing the ha pound sign or hashtag if you prefer how you want to say it. And if you're on the panel, you can also participate in the giveaway. London is blue, and that's why I wanted you to leave the Arsenal fans. If they want to participate, they have to type London is blue. And I know, I'm sure they would want to. I think we need to call up James Bond for the good of LSG self. Okay, that's a good joke there, staff. I like it. And I hope that doesn't come across as insulting to LSG. Uh, uh, London is blue. And that's the correct way to type it. London is blue. That's the correct way to type it. 
uh, Olugbenga, nice to see you back, my brother. London is blue. Uh, uh, Michael Obinka, you need a capital L, a capital I, and capital blue. London is uh, blue. Thank you. That's exactly one of the things I was looking for. And it has happened. That's why you don't block them. And you're always welcome to be part of the conversation as long as you're bantering. And like Phantom said, uh, allow opinions uh, as long as they don't disrespect anybody. London is blue. And I'll wait for more people to type and be ready. Uh, uh, Phantom, what do you want to say? I think uh, as far as Abramovich is concerned, there in America, there's a man named Andrew uh, Carnegie. And when he just, was young, Just write the best you can, not to okay. make it politics, something. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, to okay, okay, okay. So I think that Roman Abramovich did some nasty things uh, in his life to become a billionaire, and he's been trying to atone for it ever since. So um, like I said, because I've watched this documentary, and I think Roman Abramovich is guilty of certain things to, to become rich. Uh, we we want to ignore that because he's done so many wonderful things for Chelsea, but he's probably done some nasty things in Russia, uh, but that was earlier in life. And as he's grown older, he's become like, more of a Santa Claus or someone who um, we can actually like and love. So, um, you know, if he gets punished for some of the things he did earlier in life, then then that's just the law catching up with him. Uh, did uh, Coachella take a walk? No, Hello? I was pouring coffee and I don't want oh. the sound. You guys oh. will be hearing the sound. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't take a while, but I heard everything you said. I think uh, none is perfect, and we're learning as more stuff emerge, uh, uh, you know, regarding all the contenders, we're learning nobody's perfect. And we've always said it here, we've said it here like a billion times. There's hardly, uh, I mean, uh, and then Josuela, you can actually participate because this is a thank you giveaway. This is not like the, give, the regular giveaway. So even though you've won before, you can uh, participate. Um, I know that Asnafan Kuchila, Heed him, uh, 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 okay, or uh how -huh. uh, just leave them, uh, yeah. As long as they agree, London is uh, blue, they are free to participate. So, yeah, uh, we've said it a thousand times here. Even staff have also talked about it. Uh, but in staff's case, is saying, yeah, his they all did something, they had an opportunity to, you know, to to uh, that is, uh, uh, um, acquire businesses, then uh, uh, they did, and nobody wouldn't have it's a business, whether you however you see it. They, they didn't force anybody to do it. But again, the fact is there's hardly a billionaire that doesn't have some measure of skeleton in the cupboard. Uh, Nick Blue, your thoughts are before we'll do the giveaway. And, and Nick, before you say something, I wanted to thank you. I think, I, 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 I think I'd like to confer the honor on you as the peacemaker of the house. I like how you talk. I like how you welcome everybody. I like you always, uh, you know, yeah. trying uh, to... Yeah, I'll just, you know, bring I'll, people together. That is good. I, that makes me happy. And yeah. I think you are the peacemaker of Chelsea perspective. And I, if you take that yeah, on, I'd give it to you. Phantom, you know, you know, I've seen you in a few channels. Yeah, you don't probably remember me. Yeah, but uh, you know, you don't, you don't, you, you're all right. You talk good. You know, I'm only bantering you. I like to make, have a laugh sometimes, as we all do. But uh, yeah, you make some good points there. Especially about Roman just now. That's what I want to come to. You know, you know, it's all billionaires. They have to do dodgy businesses to be a billionaire. That's that's uh, everyone knows that. And Roman, he, he might have done, he, like you said, it's probably true. I've seen the documentary. I know everything about Roman. Mm. He was big. He it was a, you know he was in charge of the Russian maf uh, mafia. Don't forget, he was the main one. And uh, but he changed. Once, one, when he took over Chelsea, you know, slowly, he, so you can see he started changing his views. He wanted to make the world better. He wanted to help the NHS, the Chelsea community, fight against racists. He took, you know, threw all the ra uh, racist, racism out of Chelsea, you know. And what gets me is when they sanctioned him, you know, I don't, I don't uh, believe uh, what Coach was saying. You know, the Chelsea fans, uh, you know, they didn't come out because if they, they were scared what might happen to Chelsea or whatever. That's that's not true. You know, they may, they probably, you know, they were thinking in them steps. But me, I was twittering all bloody weeks since the sanctions were made, 
to come, you know, be there at Stanford Bridge that Friday when it was Peter Benet's memorial. And I, I was the only one with uh, six, seven people outside waiting for the crowd to come. No one came. And that what got me. It was I wasn't there to go against the government or whatever. I was there to acknowledge Roman Abramovich, you know, and what he done for this club and this country. You know, he put millions into this country and to the government. So tomorrow, <clears throat> tomorrow you you gonna all hear his name ringing out in the roads uh, from Fulham Broadway to the main gate of Stamford mm -hmm. Bridge. And you're going to hear him even more in the crowd because I'm going to be in the shed end tomorrow. For some, someone said you can't buy tickets anymore. Well, I have a ticket. I bought a ticket yesterday, last night, and I'm so happy to have that ticket. Sorry, uh, it was, it was G. I've only had it was only one ticket. If there was two, you'd be with me in the bloody ground. I'm really sad about that, but it's, it's only one ticket. Uh, my Chelsea contact managed to get me one. And, you know, I'll be making sure his name is going to be heard so loud, it will go all the way all the way down to the parliament, all, all the way in down the street. They're going to hear us tomorrow. All right, we're there for, you know, the main reason we're there tomorrow is to make sure Ricketts doesn't come to this club. And we're going to make sure of that as well. And we're going to make sure that uh, Bruce Buck is gone. Bruce Back has to go. He's been the one winding up the rickets, telling them, you know, backing them. He has to go. You know, I'm really, you know, I'm building up. I can't even sleep. I didn't sleep last night. I'm, I've been on Twitter all night, 24 hours a day. I can't sleep because it's getting to me. And my and my anger will go tomorrow when I'm there. Uh, I'll, try, all right. I'll try to take some videos for you, coach, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, that's why, you know, I'm really pissed off because we should have uh, uh, turned out that day. And it really let me down. I feel really bad that day. You don't know how. Because even if 50 fans, I would have been happy, but it was only seven. <laughs> you know, it just to appreciate, show appreciation for this man, what he's done. Not just for the club, for the whole country. He helped the NHS. He opened the hotel to those NHS staff uh, during the uh, pandemic, you know, free. They, they, you know, he, he done everything. He, he sent food to the poor. He done everything possible, uh, you know, someone could do because he wanted to change his, his uh, perception. He's not, he's not a Russian mafia anymore. Yeah, uh, Nick, if have you typed in uh, the hashtag uh, London is blue in the chat if you want to participate in the giveaway? Uh, you and have I, to, I, even if you I, I don't know if I win, I, I haven't, but or I will if I do, I'll give it to back to you. All right, all right, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go, go, go type it in. And we have another queen of, in the house. TC is now a mod, she's now another queen added to uh, our street beer, uh, our just viola. And TC are the queens of Chelsea's uh, perspective. So proud to have you guys, and so proud to have you on board as one of the mods here. At TC, uh, I appreciate that. And by the way, I must let you know. More importantly, um, Nick Blue campaigned for you. He private messaged me, say you have to make uh, uh, TC a mod. She's a good person, and and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm glad you're there. And please let me know if you can still hear me. I think I, I see some weird something on my from my microphone. Let me know if you can hear me. And again, what you have to type is you type hashtag London is a blue. All word in that hashtag has to be all caps. And I'm going to start collecting. Let me see how many people we have there. 11. I'm going to go back and do it again. Make sure you type it correctly. It is hashtag. London is blue, and that is a way of saying uh, thank you to all our supporters. Uh, uh, we, we couldn't have made it uh, uh, to this level if it wasn't uh, because of you, uh, if it wasn't uh, your uh, your contributions in the chat or on the panel. And also, we'll be doing something. Uh, uh, we'll do another one tomorrow, and that one is for you to win a shout-out. The shout-out means if you know anybody that's celebrating their birthday, and if you're the winner of the last one, you tell us about it. And then we 
dedicate about a minute or two to say happy birthday to that person. Uh, let me know if Nick has added his own hashtag or should I just run it? Let me say start collecting again. Still 11. Uh, Nick, let me know if you're joining. Okay, now we have an Arsenal fan that's willing, uh, you know, to start supporting Chelsea as long as he gets a chance to win $50. That's good to see. Uh, Steve, with the bell notification to never seen your comment. Uh, let me see. Nick Blue, London is blue. Nick, you need a capital I and a capital B, and I'll wait for you. Uh, so uh, uh, why, while, while I wait for Nick uh, to correct this uh, stuff, uh, Phantom, any, anything else you want to say before we move on to the next uh, topic? Uh, yeah. Um, do you know anything about Rudiger's uh, agent meeting Barcelona yesterday? Um, is it is I mean, is that a done deal? Or I mean, because once Fabrizio um, Romano gets involved, it's like it's almost a done deal, right? Because he was talking about how the it's almost a done deal over there in in um, Barcelona. Is it? Yeah, but uh, to me, all uh, from what I've read, I don't think it's it's a done deal in by any. Any means, if you ask me, I think um, I think he's. I think you could argue he's spoken to other cl clubs. I, I, I heard before he's spoken to to Real Madrid, and I've heard. Uh, I I don't think I think this is to, this to me is still a rumor. I think the guy loves a Chelsea Football Club, and also he has a good relationship with uh, uh, the the manager. So I should we. That if as soon as we get a new owner, I think their priority, one of their major priorities, will be to ensure that he stays at Chelsea Football Club. Because again, you must recognize that the defensive uh, department is not an area where you can easily, that is, in a few months, ass assemble a solid defensive line. It takes time. It's like a puzzle, and the slightest misalignment in that in, that in the defensive line it, it could destabilize uh, the, the rest of uh, rest of our. Uh, the rest of the players in that line. Uh, appear your thoughts. Uh, I just see it as uh, media speculation. Nothing more than that. There's no confirmation from Chelsea as far as that's the ca case. Mm -hmm. They say, unfortunately, Rudiger is joining. If that hasn't been announced, then, uh, you know, one moment he was about to join Juventus. So, uh, you know, there was virtually confirmation that Juventus were coming in and he was joining then. And obviously that never happened. So I just sort of see these stories... The only thing with Barcelona is they want to sign three players from Chelsea. And as we've seen, the uh, contract with Aspilicueta has been extended um, mm -hmm. because he's triggered triggered that. Doesn't mean he doesn't leave because obviously that happened with Giroud as well. Uh, we extended his um, uh, contract. He wanted to leave Chelsea. So that just meant that um, the club had to pay a small transfer fee to get hold of him, um, to get hold of Giroud. That might happen to Asp Aspilicueta, but we are able to trigger the contract extension, uh, which therefore means that, um, as you know, as we can't renew contract otherwise, that it doesn't fall under that category. I think the only person who's definitely leaving will be Christensen at the moment. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't see, and I don't see Chelsea fighting to keep him as much as Rudiger. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Bobby Christensen says, uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Christensen is just a slightly above average player and pretty easy to replace. So if he wants to go, bye. Uh, the reason the reason I'm concerned about that of the case of Chris Sanson is that the fact that you know he's you you could say in the in this current Chelsea squad he's the closest thing to Thiago Silva and I was hoping he was going to stay and then when Thiago hangs his boot we have a natural uh, that is a uh, uh, replacement for him I know he's will he will never be uh, another Thiago Silva but at least he's the closest thing to Thiago Silva and given how people to Thiago Silva is to the way we play. Uh, 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 Andres Christensen would have been a natural fit uh, there. But that's, by the way, again, like you said, I'm not too bothered about him. I'd rather keep uh, Antonio Rudiger than uh, him. And, and here's for you. Uh, Bobby says uh, Rudiger to Barcelona is by no means a done deal. Tell Phantom to stop. Phantom, stop. Okay. <laughs> I'm stopped. No, I was going to Yes, ask. okay. <laughs> and Fabrizio Romano gets involved because Fabrizio yeah. Romano usually and, doesn't. And uh, Fresno says, Fresno says, uh, Phantom Matt Law said nothing. And uh, that's uh, blue all the way. Yes, that's a good one. Just be all the, uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> he talks to Chelsea inside. Uh, that's good. 
And I'm breaking this really good commits to Chelsea, Katsi, and Kit Almighty Blues. You sure? Uh, are you joking? Is this April Fool, just Viola? Because you are going to be demoted to a princess if you did a preful on us with this one. We, uh, I don't think really got committing is that simple because we have restrictions. Uh, am I right, uh, uh, Pierre? We well, can't sign a new contract at the moment. So really, guys, yeah. isn't even possible right now, right? Uh, I mean, they. Just before the sanctions, there was uh, talk about the fact that uh, a, a salary had been agreed with Rudiger, that he accepted the salary. But uh, I think the issue there was the signing on fee that he was after. Um, so, uh, and obviously with the sanctions come in, we can't renew his contract under that, under the, the operating license. Mm. Mm, thank you. And here's one thing that staff has always clamoured here. No one club has ordered uh, Rudy got the same as Chelsea. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, I think staff has always said that, so I don't know where the rumors are coming from. Uh, LSD, your thoughts? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, are, you still, are you still there? Yeah. Your thoughts uh, on the rumors regarding Antonio Rudiger? Yeah. Just like you said, it's rumors. You know, Romans, I believe um, the vibe I'm getting from Rodega, I don't think he's going to leave Chelsea. You know, if he does mm. leave, I'll be, I'll be surprised. And, you know, if he leaves, I mean, no, man, Chelsea can't, you know, can we can't do this. We can't allow this to happen, you know. So just like Pierre said, yeah, um, the rumor was that he agreed already to a fee, you know. So which means... I expect the new owner to, you know, carry on from there instead of uh, letting him go. And mm. if it's true that uh, Thomas Tuko is going to have, be having a meeting with the new owners, I'm sure the player contracts issue will come up. And mm. uh, he's going to tell them the players he wants, he wants to keep in the squad. He, he's probably, and I, I, like, I know him, he's going to say, I, I like all my players. I want all my players to stay, you know, so... Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. If it does happen, it will be really, really, um, it won't be the best thing for Chelsea. No, he um, won't. Uh, he, he'll be hard to re uh, replace. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, so uh, I think we shouldn't give it much energy, you know, and, you know, thereby speaking it into existence, we should just get rid of it from our thoughts that Rudy guy is not going nowhere. Rudy guy is staying with us, you know? So, okay. That's what it is. Yeah, uh, uh, just for you to just confirm, uh, if you if you did a, a preful on us, you, you've been demoted to a princess and no longer a queen. Uh, um, how many European trophies that it suits the Arsenal fan in there? Uh, Viola, just do, do a check for me. Check if anybody has more than one entry. If somebody has more than one entry, I think they'll be disqualified. All right, let me do run out of the process so we can continue with the conversation and collect. Now we have six entries. Why did it reduce? I think the orders have left. I'm just going to run it. Uh, let the lucky winner win. Um, all right, again, I'm going to run it. Start collecting five. Okay, I'm going to draw. Let's do it. Okay, congratulations to you, Just Viola. I think well deserved uh, all the hard work you put in uh, uh, towards the growth of the channel. Yeah, but you and I are gonna fight if you've done it quickly. Tell me how I can. You're gonna get the, <laughs> the price uh, because we still haven't found a way to sort out the other one. But congratulations to you anyway. Well deserved. You've uh, you know put in so much effort uh, towards the growth of the channel. And I do appreciate that so much. And hopefully someone else wins uh, next time. I'm not going to draw it that again as I have the opportunity uh, to do that. I waited. And um, coming to you, Phantom, any other thoughts regarding the conversation we've had on, you know, uh, the which transfer? Topic? Well, we've been talking about several topics. So which topic did you want me to comment on? 
Anything, your final thoughts on the whole topics we've talked about, on the whole oh, are, uh, topic are you, we've discussed. Are you putting your show now? I mean, are you stopping the show or are you still going on? Uh, there's a chance, but there's a chance it continues. But uh, again, oh. if you're in the chat, okay. if you have anything you'd like us to address or questions, you go ahead. Usually the marathon yeah, version yeah, of the show um, goes I, I, for uh, three hours. Go ahead. How long does this process take? Um, when are we going to know who's going to be the final owner? Like, is it going to be April? Is it going to be May? What, when do we know? Okay, uh, uh, Pierre, I know we've answered that question before, but please can you uh, keep, uh, give me a hand? Uh, well, according to the timetable, uh, the second phase is supposed to be before the April the 11th. So take that as April the 10th. And then uh, following that, the uh, new owner should be announced potentially April the 18th. Uh, because or whoever's put forward has to go through the process of... Um, uh, seeing if they fit the the criteria for that the EPL for suitability, you know, you know they just do their sort of checks and stuff. I mean, obviously it took a while with Newcastle before they were accepted as uh, owners, but uh, I mean, that was the the whole purpose about finding a suitable candidate is that it would basically take less than a week or a week, and then the new owner should come in about April the eighteenth. That that's that's the proposed timelines, doesn't? It? Doesn't mean it's going to happen on April the 18th, but that's the proposed timeline. Mm. Well, thank you, because I do want this drama to be over. We all want it to be over, brother, uh, because it doesn't. Uh, it's draining the life out of me if I'm allowed to push uh, put it that way. Again, if you're in the chat, if you have any questions or anything you'd like us to address or any update, you let us know. Uh, uh, let me come to you, LSC. Uh, the match tomorrow. I want to ask the question from this perspective uh, because it's going to be a protest. Uh, and I know you're part of the planning. And I know Nick is here, so I'm going to come to Nick in a bit. Uh, can you guarantee that there's no way the protest will affect the performance of the play players? Yeah, that's why we're starting early. The match starts around 2. I mean, around 2, till, but at 2... They should be on the page with we'll warm up and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. So the match is three o'clock. Um, yeah, it's necessary, you know. If you listen to my contributions, so you know, some past streams, you know, I'm always concerned when it, when it comes to protests just before a match. Mm -hmm. I'm always concerned because of the you know mentality of the players, you know. Because if you remember what happened during the Super League with the Brighton game, that game maybe would we, we were on a run of winning games, you know, during that period. But that game ended draw, so um, that's why I'm you know a bit concerned. But for this protest, no, it's absolutely necessary, absolutely necessary, you know. So I'm going to be there, and um, we're going to make sure that uh, it doesn't. Uh, degenerate uh, into something else. Like uh, what Nick was saying to me, um, you know, uh, last night, <laughs> basically mm -hmm. we have to, um, you know, not to bring any flag in there, whether Ukraine or Russians, because there might be some Russian, uh, Russians who are Chelsea fans, and then they see Ukraine flag, you know, that might lead to issues, you know. So we we'll just try and get away from the politics, you know, no Ukrainian flag, no Russian flag, you know, and make sure everything is okay. And then we'll try to also look for other, because the media will be looking for, you know, Nazi flag or some things like that to smear us with, you know? So those are the things I'm really concerned with, to try to identify the troublemakers early, you know, and try, you know, get them out of the protest. Because it's gonna be peaceful and uh, because we are going to be very, very loud. And I believe that after tomorrow, the rickets will be out of the game. I, I hope out. so. I, I hope so. Because uh, the reason why I want to come in there um, now, I think uh, some measure of friction, if you like, is actually developing between Chelsea fans, uh, but in the Chelsea fan base, even though it hasn't happened. Some people have issues with some saying they're going to stop supporting Chelsea should that happen. Some people have called, called they, that's each side have called each other names. Some people are saying the other side don't really care because they're not Muslims or because they're not blacks or because they're not Asians. 
that reminds me of a typical uh, Nigerian stories where two people walking on, on the road found uh, some uh, bulk of money on, on the ground. And that is, uh, no, it started arguing what if they find a bulk of money on the ground. The other one says, okay, I'll give you this amount because I was the one that saw, saw the money. They haven't even seen the money, but they're fighting already. The Ricket hasn't taken over Chelsea, but we're fighting between ourselves, whereas we have a job to do. Our priority right now should be to make our voices heard so that they don't uh, they get the chance of even becoming owners of the club. So it just, it just reminds me of that typical Nigerian story I told right now. They yeah. haven't even found money, but they're fighting over who takes what percentage of the money. That's similar to some measure, but that's by yeah, the way. So thank the, you for so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. To add to that, yeah. So the you know the protest tomorrow is a coalition of people that do not want to see the records, the people that uh, are saying that they are going to leave the club if the record gets in. Okay, so they are going to have their chance tomorrow to fight to stop the rickets. That's what tomorrow is about. We are stopping them. And in terms of whether we are going to get uh, any results, you know, we're not leaving until they tell us, until somebody from, you know, Chelsea board come out there to tell us that the rickets are out. You understand? Mm -hmm. And, you know, tomorrow might get very, very... Um, you know, might go a different direction, but we are not. Yeah, I, I hope so. And, I, and th thank you for saying you will make sure that uh, doesn't happen. And also, if I recall, Nick did say yesterday that he will do all he can, that all he can to ensure the youngsters participating in the practice doesn't do anything uh, uh, stupid. If I'm allowed to face it that way, Nick, I'm going to come to you. Can you tell us how the plans you have in place to ensure that nobody does anything that will tarnish the image of the fans or uh, make the situation worse? Uh, you know, done, uh, and, uh, what plans you have in place to ensure the practice doesn't in any way affect the performance of the players? Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of points to this. Look, um, first of all, you know, I, I was wrong to put a tweet out, you know, uh, to some of us who have uh, U Ukraine flags flying around because I didn't think properly. Like I said, I haven't been sleeping lately. Then, you know, I, I changed it because I changed it because I realized we have so many Russian and Ukraine fans in our fan base. And, they, they and we should be, be united. There. Yes, they're going to be there tomorrow. So we don't want any flags. If there's any flags, it's going to be the Chelsea flag and St. George's flag. That's all. We don't need a Ukraine or Russian flags. I made that clear and a lot of other people have as well. That's one step to avoid any, you know, uh, rights or fighting against each other. And, and, you know, we're going to be there. And when tomorrow comes, it's like, it's hard to describe. It's like the, the Super League, but it's similar, but different. When tomorrow comes, you're going to see the Muslim Chelsea fans, the Christian Chelsea fans, Jewish Chelsea fans, you know, all all different uh, nationalities, they're all going to be together tomorrow. And I guarantee that. They're all going to be there. I know what Chelsea fans are like. And they're all going to be there and shouting their heads off. A lot of them, you know, and we're going to try and stop the bus before it goes into the uh, inside the ground. Our Chelsea bus, we're going to demand Peter Check to come out and guarantee that the Ricketts they're not going to take over the club. That's what we're. That's the main objective tomorrow. Okay. Plus, we can, <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah, we're going to. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. We will stop the bus, uh, the team buses. We, we don't care about the Brentford one, but the Chelsea bus is going to be stopped, like we did in the, in the Super League. We've done the same, and we made Peter Chair come and talk to us. That's what we got. We're uh, we're going to do tomorrow. And another thing is, yeah, another thing is, is um, you know, like I said, everyone's going to be together. They're going to make their voices heard so loud, it will be ringing out of London. And and the, the good thing, uh, that's, this, and the, the reason I wanted it this Saturday, a lot of people, some people said, no, let's do it the other day in the morning, Thursday morning. I said, no, it's going to be Saturday when 
the players are there and we have a match day. It's more, it's very important we do it tomorrow because the players, they're going to see what's going on and they're going, they know what we're like. Our players, they do know. They love us fans. As we love them, they love us. And and that worries spare them on. Tomorrow, I'm pretty, I, I'll tell you my prediction, the score is going to be 4 new Chelsea tomorrow. And I'm going to... Back I hope up. so. Yes. I, uh, I hope so. Yeah, we're going to... And the players, they're going to... Uh, because of everything, they be up for it. They're going to be up for it like anything else tomorrow. I, I guarantee mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say about Rudiger as well. Rudiger, you know, he's not going nowhere. He loves Chelsea. He loves the club so much that Tuchel would tell the eventual owners, you have to give him what he wants because I want this man here. He ain't going nowhere. And they gotta, they will do that. Rudiger loves the club. He doesn't want to go to Barcelona or anywhere else. That's all, all rumours, media talk. And, and yeah, and... Yeah, and like I said, I'm so glad uh, I have a ticket. I'll be in the ground as well. I'll be outside early on, or I'll be inside. So you know, it's a double, double win yeah. for me. I, I think uh, I'll start. We'll talk privately. So let me know what. Yeah. So let me know when uh, the protest starts. Uh, I'd oh, like yeah. to send you the link so that you can join via your cell phone and oh, yeah, show yeah. us what's yeah. going on. Uh, I think I'd be happy oh. if you can do that for us. Yeah. Um, before, yeah, I'll come to you and and then you were saying so you still saying something? I said I done it before. I have, I was commentating against uh, Chelsea Leeds game. I done it for uh, what is the sportswear uh, DJ mm -hmm. VJ? Sorry, VJ. <laughs> yeah, I done it for him and he, he liked it a lot because he was going over to India and all his uh, Indian. Uh, 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 Indian followers that were uh, watching, and they, you know, they watched the actual Chelsea, you know, to Stanford Bridge for the first time live, and they mm -hmm. really appreciated that. Yeah, of course, I would do that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I have VJ tomorrow to help me with that as well. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, sorry. okay, it was LSC, good. yeah, LSC, yeah, and that's good. I'm happy you guys met on Chelsea perspective, that's history on its own, and I like that. Uh, Pierre, I'll come to you before I go to Phantom. Uh, Pierre, how important is uh, uh, that uh, tomorrow's game from the perspective that mathematically, yeah, we still have a chance to win uh, the league, you never know. And also, given uh, what we're going, uh, which also fans are going through? Uh, well, we're on a good run. That's, um, you know, and uh, obviously it's important to continue. Um, I'm it's always a bit of a more of a lottery when you're on a winning run when you've got these international breaks. But uh, I don't see why the, the team shouldn't beat Brentford. It is a West London derby, but uh, um, you know we, we we managed to beat them when they were probably a bit more scary earlier on in the season at their ground. Yeah. Um, and obviously Stamford Bridge and their current form at the moment. I I I see another three points for Chelsea. I just wanted to add here to Phantom, just because he was mentioning about um, the fact he was one, about the oldest person. I, um, I can probably safely say that both Nick and myself are older than you, if that makes you feel younger, Phantom. I'm 50 years old, sir. <laughs> and they, and he's telling, he heard that, and he's telling you that they're both older than you. Maybe you start I'm feeling younger. I'm 50 years old, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, so, 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 so if I throw if I throw my hat in the ring, I'm, 50, I'm 58, you know, so I'm, I'm older than you. <laughs> okay, the, if you're 58, then you are older than me. I think Stav is older than you, right? <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, I was, I was, and you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that Nick's older than you as well. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, uh, yeah, uh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. That is just brilliant. Yeah, that yeah. is just brilliant. Phantom, you see. He just wants you to feel younger, so don't feel like you're the oldest here. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Pierre, uh, you, uh, yeah, uh, Pierre. Coach. Pierre, I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest here, um, and uh, you know. But when you see me, you 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 wouldn't think that because I'll, I'll be 65 in July, but I, I wow. feel like 20, 25. And when you see me, wow. you won't, you will never believe I'm 65. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. See, let me just. Uh, I'm not saying just coming down the screen. Gonna, yeah, go ahead. I'm not saying it because I want to say to you know I'll look young, but that's what people mm. say. 
every time, whoever people who don't know me, when I say I'm 65 soon, they, you know, they start laughing. They, everyone's different. It's how you feel what counts. Mm-hmm. Not the yeah, age. yeah, yeah, exactly. Age ain't nothing but a number, somebody said. Uh, uh, but I'll come back to you again. Um, I want to say, uh, if you're in the, if you have the please make sure to like the video, share the video, make sure uh, to get more people to join the stream. It's a, uh, the Blue Morning Show is a daily show, 11 a.m. UK. And I'm sure if you're enjoying that, I'm sure your friends would as well. And I want to say, uh, I'll read this on the cup, on the screen. Uh, tomorrow, the protests will be bigger than the Super League protests. Rickets are going to are gone after this. Uh, I, I think one thing you haven't learned is that uh, they thrive when their fans are happy. Uh, you, the, the client will better explain that to you. The moment they're in, it will be difficult to get rid of them. So it, I think it's important. It's as big as you said. But I don't think they really care. Uh, but, but hopefully, uh, uh, our safety net, like the board, uh, our board, uh, um, Marina this time, I can't call a Bruce Buck. Uh, maybe they make the right uh, choice for us. Um, a uh, fever, don't waste your time. Uh, okay, and that's a fight between you guys. Oh, MG. Okay, that's it. Let me see. Uh, he shared the link here. If you want to read, please go see it. Uh, let me see. Uh, no pressure, Peter. Poor guy. Okay. Uh, Kobe, uh, Viola again. Let me see. Uh, sorry, uh, the Antonio Rudiger news was April Fuse uh, <laughs> April Fuse uh, uh, on his Anket channel. I just checked. You should have done that before you 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 share that here. Um, just Viola, no one today. Trust no one today. Okay, Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Rudiger's future are hands are tied. We cannot offer negotiate and uh, renegotiate and negotiate with his agent. Uh, fair enough if he listens to offers or uh, uh, if he listens to other offers. But we are confident again. He hasn't given up. But then again, uh, this man is such an eloquent speaker. I mean, he can get you to believe that the world is square. Uh, Polisic and I don't think nothing uh, serious. Uh, anything coming out of the TT uh, press, uh, I usually read that from uh, just a viola. So I was going to come to... Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, you go ahead, Phantom, what you have to say. Yeah, um, I just thought about it logically, and with a new ownership hanging overhead and Marina probably not even going to be the negotiator for Chelsea much longer, um, if I'm Rudiger, and I am the biggest Rudiger fan here by far, so if I'm Rudiger, I'm not making any decisions until I talk to the new ownership, because the new ownership might say, oh, 300000 no problem, I don't care about weight structure or whatever. I mean, they might have a completely different... Uh, um, ethos than what Marina and uh, Abramovich has been doing with Chelsea all along. So, so if I'm Rudiger, I'm not signing anything until I see what the who is the new owner and what they are offering me. Uh, and let's see your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it shouldn't be um, an issue that uh, we should worry much about because. You mm. will have to wait to negotiate with the new owner, just like Fatum said, you know, because uh, it would be foolhardy for him to just uh, decide to leave, you know, or give up on Chelsea just because we are in this situation when we already uh, know that uh, there was an agreement in place before the sanctions. So mm. it would make more sense because, you know, you can never tell, you know, it might even uh, get more money with the new owners. You know, so it is what it is. Let's just wait and chill out on the really good situation. Let's just wait. No need to panic over it. As long as Tuko is confident, let's uh, let's wait. But uh, I know Christian C will be the only one gone. And uh, as for the equator, with the kind of person I, I perceive him to be, I don't think he's going to leave Chelsea in this particular period of time. I believe he wants to go into the new era, you know, of uh, Chelsea ownership. You understand? Maybe one mm-hmm. season before he decides to leave. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's been a more like a transition season for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for putting it in. Uh, Michael, your final thoughts on, uh, on the transfer situation. Uh, let me just say, let's go to the game tomorrow. Uh, your, your thoughts on the game tomorrow. 
Um, I think um, just is, is going to win tomorrow, for sure. Uh, and I hope uh, all, the, all the players that went to international duty, they are well, okay, and strong. Mm -hmm. So I'm predicting that uh, Shays is going to win 2-0. By tomorrow. Okay, I, ho I hope that happens. I I'm going to take everybody, everybody's uh, final thoughts one by one, uh, and uh, we'll, let's end it uh, with the game so we don't go back to something that would drag us to politics. We will try uh, from the next uh, uh, episode of uh, the Blue Money Show. We will try to pick topics that will not drag us into politics again. I think it's starting to become a concern. Uh, Nick, we coming to you. What type of game do you expect uh, tomorrow? Uh, yeah. It's got. It's going to be. Uh, how can I say? It's going to be very emotional in the ground, and the atmosphere is going to be very loud tomorrow. And that should mm -hmm. be good for the for team. They're going to thrive on that tomorrow. That's why I'm so confident we're going to win three or four nil. You know, I'm predicting four nil. Mm -hmm. It'll be the great ending for the day. And then everyone will go happy, even you know, very happy, and they'll be singing all the way home tomorrow. You know, that's what I want to see. Yeah, I'm very confident because mm. it's going to be loud. I mean, loud. You know, you can imagine before the game, twelve o'clock. Every you know, twelve o'clock, all the most of the people coming, they haven't got tickets for the game. Like you know, you all the tickets have been sold before. But uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's going to be fussy. It's going to be forty-one thousand. You know, it's all sold out. And the, uh, you know, but there's going to be so many thousands. I, you know, what I'm hearing is it's going to be massive tomorrow. And, and most of the the ones, you know, forget the forty thousand who are going to they have to go to go to the game. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of them are not going to come early as well. So you can imagine what sort of crowd it's going to be for the protest tomorrow. Could be, you know, biggest process ever from a football club in this mm -hmm. country history. This could be the biggest process in history tomorrow, and I'm sure it will be. Yeah, biggest peaceful. Yeah, peaceful, of course. But you know, the more people, it's going to be very hard to keep it peaceful. But the issue, because we're all going to be on the same page tomorrow. Doesn't matter mm. who you are, what color, what religion, we all to you know, we all going there for the same cause. You know, to get uh, make sure the Ricky kids don't come in, make sure uh, Bruce Bucky's gone, and they uh, have shout you know, shout about uh, uh heads off for Roman Abramovich, which mm -hmm. every single Chelsea fan loves, you know, and admires and always will do. And that's what I have to say. There's, you can't find one fan we say a bad word for a moment. You, you know, I can't see one. I've never heard anyone say a, a single bad word for him since he's, since he's been our owner. Yeah. Etc. Rory. Etc. Rory. Oh, yeah. Forget that idiot. He's the only one. He'd be, he'd be by himself like he was uh, at the uh, Super League protest. He was there. Uh, mm. You know, condemning uh, condemning a Roman. Imagine, and yeah, he was one of the few uh, LSG. You know, he won't be, he won't be, he won't have a. We, you won't even hear him tomorrow. But if we do see him tomorrow, we can just. He's a, you know how tiny he is that guy. We just uh, take him from the collar and fly him down the lane to Tottenham or something. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. So we want yeah. to make it clear: it's not a riot tomorrow. It's not a riot. Oh, it's a peaceful it's protest. Not a riot. Exactly. It's Thank okay. you for clarifying it's that. Okay. I think we will yeah. round off today with LSC. So I'll go to Phantom. Phantom, what, what type of game do you expect tomorrow and I what do you think the outcome will be? One, ZS one, Brentford zero. One zero win, you think? Oh, no, no. Havertz scores one, mm. ZS scores one, and then Brentford scores zero. So the total for Chelsea is two zero. I always also predict the players who score two. Okay, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, how about the fact that usually we struggle against team we think we're going to beat like that? Uh, well, no, but, but 
I looked at the Brentford game that we played in Brentford, and uh, they they own goal, one goal, and then the other goal was a penalty kick by Jorginho. So and they they were a better team then. It's going to be an easier game than than when it was in Brentford. Okay, uh, uh, come LSG. Uh, you close uh, and before I come to LSG, please. Wherever you're watching from, uh, please do not forget to like the video. And also because there are people who get to watch it. Surprisingly, even though we're having marathon shows, people t seem to watch it even more after the show ended. You see a show that ends with 300 uh, 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 views. And then in the two days' time, it is 2,700 views. That shows you people are interested in the topic that we discuss here. And they're watching it no matter how long it's been. Uh, uh, again, um, coming to you, uh, Alex, I'd like you to round off uh, the discussion for us. What type of game do you expect tomorrow? But let me just breeze uh, through the chat. Um, this is just banter between the people there. Uh, it's always good to see banter as long as there's nothing personal in it. And staff here says, I predict Lukaku will start. That's a possibility. If Havertz traveled, I think it makes sense for, for him to start. And TC says uh, Lukaku might start. And yeah, again, welcome, TC. Welcome as one of the queens of the house. I'm happy uh, to make you a mod and because you've been great, a great supporter of this channel. And yeah, uh, and Nick Blue, thank you for suggesting that. Uh, so, LSU, what type of game do you expect and what do you think the outcome would be? Yeah, I expect a very high, intense game tomorrow. Um, yeah, I expect Jesse to, you know, come out all out, come blazing in on the first half. Mm -hmm. And I expect the crowd to be very, very emotional and loud, and this will spur on our player. And uh, in terms of their mentality, I know they are on Twitter and all of that. They are already are aware there will be protests tomorrow. They know that already. All right? And they are already discussing it among themselves on what to expect. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I believe their mentality is already there. Okay, we have to fight. We have to do this. We have to keep on winning. You know? So I believe the protests will give them some level of siege mentality. And uh, I don't expect um, I don't expect uh, Brentford to do much against our defense. Uh, I expect Mendy to be fantastic as usual and uh, keep a clean sheet. Um, yeah, it's going to be another three point for us. Uh, and uh, let's keep marching. And uh, we respond. We uh, as far as the protests go. Uh, Nick will discuss tomorrow how to work with law enforcement to make sure that. Uh, everything is good because we don't want to be seen hearing arrests, hearing this, you know, any sort of negative stuff. We want everyone that come in there should go back in one place, you know? So that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for that. A uh, great input. And uh, uh, Queen at TC says, look, I come and start. And Queen at Just Viola said, let's go. Uh, come on, you uh, blues. Uh, again, I appreciate all the support from everybody on the panel. The first ever uh, super chat for Chelsea Perspective came up from a phantom of many topics. That means a lot to me, brother. Thank you very much again. Uh, you know, I can't and thank you enough. Uh, uh, and then the second was from um, uh, from Sasuke Uchiha, a whopping $50 donation. Uh, Sasuke, thank you again. And again, uh, uh, you know that means a lot to me and then my brother mikhail who's always been at the bigger one of the biggest supporters of chelsea perspective i cannot uh, thank you enough uh, i want to thank everybody that's been on the panel from michael who become my nigerian evil brother phantom of many topics my arizona neighbor and the brother lsc of uh, my brother nigerian brother also i believe uh, though we haven't talked about where you're from and uh, Pierre, who also been on the panel, uh, and then uh, Fahim, my brother, who a uh, fellow content creator also, who was on the panel. And make sure to go check out CFC Fahim, great channel, objective, no clickbait. And I will keep preaching that because I trust him not to change. And with that, I say, please remember, we have a pre-game a pre show tomorrow. And Nick, uh, like I've talked to you, and also LSE, if you guys can connect and join the show, show us what's going on. I wouldn't mind starting the pregame show earlier to accommodate you guys. That will mean a lot to us here. And got to go, Coachella. I have to buy stuff for my birthday tomorrow. Thank you for letting us know. We will celebrate with you tomorrow, Fresh. Oh, yes, make sure to yeah prepare. It's going to be big. We will celebrate with you. And you know we love you here, Fresh. Oh, and see ya. Good luck uh, with 
protest tomorrow. Thank you. And I want to say special also thank you uh, to staff for providing our updates via private messaging. I appreciate that, brother. You know, you're loved here. We're all one family here. You, Phantom of may, many topics. We may have our differences, but still we are one. And with that, I say goodbye to everyone. See you guys tomorrow for another Blue Morning Show and nice. also the post-game, uh, our pre-game show. God bless us all and bye. Uh, yes. Bef before you go, do you have time to talk by telephone after the uh, thing or you got to go pick up your kids or do other chores? After uh, let me see. What time is it? Uh, six. six I think we can talk privately okay. if you want to. My phone number in the private chat then. All right. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Mm, all right. With that, I say God bless us all. See you all uh, tomorrow for the pregame show and uh, bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye.